sound is. Guess what, mate? Tell me. We have Tarukas. Unbelievable. <laughs> and you know what? We're not even going to put fucking cream on it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, be honest, when we, when we started the podcast last year, did you ever think we'd have an international star guest join us? Tom, we're, we're pacing up and down Brighton, who would have thought we'd be in this seat doing this, let alone having an international celebrity come here? It's unbelievable. I'm so jazzed about having Angelo here in the distillery, all the way from Canada via LA, because I've been watching his comedy for a really long time now, and I'm guessing most English-speaking Greeks around the world have seen him as well. When did you catch a first glimpse of him? First glimpse? Ah, oh, probably about 10 minutes ago. Or... <laughs> in the flesh. In the flesh. Yeah, no, look. When were uh, you aware of him? Look, YouTube uh, is all over YouTube, all over uh, any social media. Yep. You get, I've got certain clips. I go, who's this guy? He's yeah. pretty funny. <laughs> and, then I, and then you looked him up, and then before we knew it, we are hooked as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he's outstanding. <laughs> he is. He but is. look, let's stop pretending that he's not in the room. Evangelos Petros Tsarujas. Welcome hard. to Australia in Uzo Talk, my friend. Uh, thank you very much for... <laughs> Letting me come on your show to uh, to find an Australian woman. Prepnaki left her, and the fellow be there, and the fellow to the end of the month, and I'm with the need left her. Hi, mate. I want to be that guy. So, if you're a single lady looking for a real man, yeah, a real man, make sure you make sure you email us at uzo talk at outlook dot com and. Uh, Give us your credentials. And I'm wearing my Uzo Talk hat, which you is are. great. Yeah. It, it looks, looks so good on you, man. It suits you, you. You know, I used to be a travel agent years did ago really? in Canada before I did this. There you go. And I had a guy who was at University of Ottawa. He sounded like that. Right. So he used to come, he used to come into the travel agency and I go, Panayoti, puta pasimara. I'm looking for the woman's to... And that's how we talk. <laughs> really creepy, right? Yeah. I go, look, you're going to... You sound like a serial killer. <laughs> and he goes to me in Greek, he goes, ah, tinafto, to catalaveno, to serial. <laughs> then in the proino, afto putron to proi, I go, no, it's a, you sound like a creep. <laughs> Ti to creep, tin to creep. You know, it, it's just so <laughs> funny, man. It was just, and, I, and I just thought it was hilarious that. Did he have one of those uh, Olympic Airways uh, models in the background? No, he had a tote bag. A tote bag. <laughs> I used to sell for Olympic Airways. Did you really? Yes. Olympic knew. So they would fly. This was the routing. It was like Sydney, Melbourne, Montreal, Toronto. Oh, wow. Chicago, New York, maybe Boston. Yep. <laughs> Those were the international flights yep. from, um, from everywhere else in the world. And, you know, of course, Europe and everything else. <clears throat> so the Greeks always wanted to go on a direct flight. Of course. But because they're such nationalists, they will always be like, uh, the Olympic Airways is the top. <laughs> then in the uh, Calitero. Top in what? Uh, top, like in the top. <laughs> you know, to the Calitero. To the Calitero. And to the best. To but the they best. always complained it was either the food was shit, uh, they all smoke in the plane. So one lady said, I put her in the non smoking section, and everybody was smoking. And she called the flight attendant and said, um, <laughs> Then he, uh, nah, I'm a face cup, <laughs> and, and they're like, Well, no, but it's a non smoking section. <laughs> you know, yeah. they, do, you, do you remember when you'd buy it? You'd buy a seat in the non smoking section, but they'd put you like one row away from it. Like it's right. going to make a difference. It makes from, a difference. The, from the curtain. That was yeah. the difference. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, had one curtain be, be spokers and non-spokers. Olympic pioneers of the self-service airline. Yeah, <laughs> they really were. They yeah. really were. But you know, they had a great record. <laughs> they did in terms of safety. Absolutely. Believe it or not, it was rated high. Yeah, wow. and the pilots were good. But the thing about a thing like Olympic Airways, and at the time, you know, when Onassis created. Olympic Airways, he was the first one to get the flight attendants in those stylish outfits yes. with Pierre Cardin. When it was owned by Onassis, it was like it was a real luxury, cool airline. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's the way he did things. And mm. then the Greek government took it over. <laughs> and then what do they have, like 80,000 employees? Everybody yes. worked for Olympic. Yep. Everybody was getting comp tickets. I mean, it was a, it was a shit show. In the end. I had a cousin who used to work there. Holding the engine up, the wing up. <laughs> I had a cousin who used to work there in, um, in engineering, and he said there was literally one person to put a screw in, another person to screw it, and yeah. another person to watch the guy screwing the, the screw. Yeah. One guy screwing the guy screwing the screw. Exactly. 
Good someone stuff. writing up a report. <laughs> but you know what's funny because I know that the thing was they had the direct routes. Yeah. So you you want to go direct? So I remember this one guy, uh, Adoni. He came in and he goes to me, "Kanoni um, sena tiketo na pamestinolada." I said, "Okay," and he, and I said to him, "Ti brought the to KLM." KLM, Royal Dutch Airlines, yeah, yeah. great airline. Dutch I go, oh, the bus, the bus, Montreal, Amsterdam, mm-hmm. Amsterdam, Athena, the bow. <laughs> I go, yeti, echone chasi, posis gries, echone chathiki, mesa sto aerodromio. They think that old people get lost or abducted. I go, what? Echone chasi, puli, yeri, ki mesa, then echone yirisi, pote. I go, the bow, Olympic Airways. The, the black said, hole. The black hole. And I said, hold on. I said, so you're in Schiphol Airport, Amsterdam. You're telling me, the Xeri Zissi is Greeks. He goes, a lot of people have gone missing <laughs> Okay. in Amsterdam. Because, you know, Greeks, we're not conspiracists at all. No, no not at all. I don't know. And not at all. And I used to fucking laugh. And I thought, <laughs> so I told, I told the guy from, the guy was Greek who yeah. worked at KLM in Montreal. And yeah. I told him. I, it took half an hour to get him off the floor. Yeah. He goes, what did he tell you? <laughs> yeah. And I'm not, and I'm not going to say the guy's name. I had a client who... You're not going to say George's name. Was going to say... <laughs> 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 I told the guy... They say George's name on here. George, it's yeah. George from Montreal. Yeah. No, but this guy went to the airport. He said... He goes to me, I'm only taking one thing with me. I said, that's no problem. Pardon yeah. Oh God, what was this it? Guy, this guy shows up at the airport in Montreal. <laughs> the station manager gets a phone call. Mm. Then I got a phone call. The guy showed up with a, a full fridge. <laughs> a a, one fridge stuffed with shit inside it. <laughs> I, have, I have one thing to take to Greece, the fridge. And, yeah, and, and the guy goes, sir, that's... No, no, I asked the travel agent, Adzolo, he says to me, I can take one thing. Yeah, Malaka, one suitcase. <laughs> I didn't say take a fucking fridge. <laughs> So he takes a whole CEO <laughs> yeah. and at the airport, literally a check-in. Yeah. And they called my friend Ernie, who was working there at the time. He goes, Ernie, you got to come see this. He goes, what? Oh, no, I, I thought I saw everything. And Ernie said he went there and the guy had one fridge. He goes, there's one thing. I, I, I promised my sister in Greece I'm going to bring her a fridge. Yeah. And, and he, he put his clothes inside the freezer oh part God, and the other side. Kidding. And they wrapped it. You know, and he wrapped it up. This is, this is the hack of hacks. Yeah, and, and what <laughs> happened... Always thinking outside the square, right? That's it. <laughs> but you see, by law, even if you think something like that, they got to open it, make sure there's not a dead course, body inside right. it. Right? It's got to be the right way. Oh, no, no, the guy had all kinds of stuff. And, and, and he called me and he says to me, them weepers, and I, I go, mia valiza, suipa, think of fridge. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy goes, they were laughing for weeks. Like, that story went... <laughs> Viral that a guy took a fridge on KLM to go to Greece. <laughs> was that his carry on by any chance? <laughs> it's, it's, no, the other story was it's funny you mentioned Olympic and you didn't know yeah. that I was a travel agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna make this one time Kyrios Alavras was his name. He was the station manager in Montreal. He told me the story. The ambassador at the time, because I was living in Ottawa, the ambassador of Greece was coming back with his wife. Okay. And yeah. they put him in Olympic class, which is first class. Yep. Mm. Some Farmadoro there, some Sopani yeah. brought a fucking live rabbit on the airplane <laughs> for real. Wow. And he fell asleep, and the Lago ran out of the bag and was running all over the plane. <laughs> and people were freaking out on the 747 going over. Uh, so they like had they go goes in the Lago, and the rabbits going around the airplane. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, and they had to make an emergency landing in Dublin, Ireland. <laughs> To find they had the to, rabbit. Land the play, and they had to find the rabbit. And try and catch it. <laughs> but I think they, they, it's by law, you can't bring it. I know in Australia, you can't even bring a bag no. of chips oh, no. from the plane you here. You can't bring anything here. So imagine a, a rabbit from Greece. Yeah. And the guy goes, what the? He goes, I'm, uh, he goes uh, bringing it for my niece in Canada. Not to Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Whatever we have pets, see, whatever people realize with Greeks, whatever pets we get, we end up eating them on Sunday. That's it. Mm. That's, That's it. why I don't like lamb. You know? mm. I tell you what, I don't know if you know, uh, Nick and I used to work for Qantas. That's where we met initially. <laughs> Interesting. And <we're, laughs> So Nick's done, Nick's done customer service and check-in. I'm sure you've got a lot of stories, but Run you just airports, reminded me. Set up airports. Yeah, there you go. Going, mate. <laughs> I know, his list is, I, w- I won't say how long it is. You just reminded it's me of a story. <laughs> I was working in freight. 
and they lost a monkey on board underneath. Like it was, it was like in a cage. They lost the, mon- the monkey in the plane. It got out of it got out of the cage oh, and it was running shit. amok in the in the cargo hold. And they needed to bring you know people into you know to wrangle this monkey back into the into right. the cage. And it bit the the handler. <laughs> oh shit! Wow. <laughs> Did I tell you the cat story? A couple of baggage handlers open up the cargo hold and there's we got these pets in cabins sort of thing. Uh, anyway, they, they grab this ginger cat and they looked out. They shake the cage and it wasn't moving and the thing was dead i thought Fuck, oh shit. what do we do oh shit. you have told me this story yeah i, I told remember. you yeah. Yeah. yeah so i'm not sure how they got a hold of another ginger cat they had another ginger cat <laughs> they took the collar off of this cat it looked exactly the same I thought, Fuck, you know, ginger looked the same same height so they took the collar off this dead cat <laughs> put it on this live cat this was in the 90s, actually. So, right. Yeah. So anyway, so these baggage hunters go, fuck, what do we do? The supervisor, you know, the genius he was, he goes, look, we've got wherever it was, they're in the freight shed. to go, grab this other ginger cat. Uh, no one's claimed it or whatever it was. I don't remember the story, but he managed to put the collar on this little cat. Anyway, and the cat was running around. It was fine. So he handed it to the customer. It's a little old lady, and she nearly passed out. I go, what's wrong? She says, that's not my cat. Yes, it is. Look, it's got the collar at your cat. Oh, no. She goes, my cat was dead. I was bringing it back to bury it. <laughs> She's repatriating the cat. Oh, my God. The cat. <laughs> the cat's alive. Christ has risen. Your cat. <laughs> your cat risen again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. It's the resurrection of the ginger cat. Yeah, it's back. Dude, that is hilarious. Yeah. It is. <laughs> That oh, is hilarious. We could go on dude. forever. Absolutely. Should, we should bring in Ange. I'm sure we've yeah, got a stories. Look, we could talk all day about stories like that, but I've got a hard-earned thirst, Nick. What do you reckon? Should we yes, get into it properly? I think so, mate. Let's go. Yamas, Pedia. Welcome, Angelo. Yamas. Here we are. 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 It was always the cure all along with... Hey, those old Greeks lived to 110, 115. Absolutely. And they're pounding back a kilo of krasi a day. Yeah. And all these people are vitamins and skatani. That's why they're doing a marathon and they weigh 100 pounds and they die. (laughs) That's right. Uh, Yeah, yeah. it's that tip it Kills anything. That's it. Well, look, we've given Angelo free reign to pick whatever he wanted to, to drink today. And uh, Angelo, you went with the Plomari. Plomari, it's good stuff. It's good stuff, isn't it? What do you, what do you reckon? Have you, uh, do, you, do you drink a lot of Uzo? You know, I do. I, I would get stuff like, uh, I would get like uh, Uzo 12. Okay. And my, you know, my mom's from Mitilini, so they're okay. famous for Fantastic. Uzo. Plomari. Yes. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, my dad's from Sparti. So mm. just for everybody listening, um, uh, Spartiates don't like Nisiotes. Doesn't matter what <laughs> island you're from, they want to kill you. They don't care. So it's so funny because my mom was really the funny one, uh, uh, open one. Yeah. Dad was just, you know, Sparta. Yeah. You know, it's just, it was just so funny. I think that's what I'm a mixture. There's days where I'm like him, and then there's most days I'm like my mom. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so I remember going, uh, going to, um, uh, Mitilini as a kid and my dad wouldn't go yeah because they're all communists yeah. right <laughs> you know they, 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 this is the mentality and I go I go it's a nice place what are you talking about yeah. you know Jeez. I mean you know I met there's a lot of lesbians there because it's Lesbo yep. I got the whole story of San Fo the whole thing there's a, a queen labor camp like and, and I told a friend of mine this, I remember in the third grade in Canada and they sent me to the principal's office for saying my mom's from an island of lesbians until I said, do your research. And my mother came in and said, I am from an island of lesbians. I'm a lesbian. Let, let my son go. Yeah. Because the term for people from Lesbo is lesbian. Okay. So the way you would say Aussies, Americans, mm. from that thing, that's the term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I said Lesbos, which is spelled L-E-S-B-O-S, mm. 
everyone would say, you know, they would hear the term lesbian or they hear all these terms and we knew them as different. So <clears throat> when, it, when I, in my comedy, sometimes I, everybody thinks it's kutamares, right? Mm-hmm. But the reality is there's a lot of things that is real. <laughs> so in Greeks, and I'll say this here, some, I, I was in Greece and the guy says, uh, my cousin goes, you know, love that word. Sorry. You're only, you're only gay yeah. If you, um, if you're uh, the guy taking it, not the guy <laughs> giving it, I go okay. Hold on, Stelio. And I'm talking. Is, so, is that called Budzaras? Yeah, yeah. No, no uh, uh, Kolobaras. Kolobaras. Right. right? Is that what it is? So yes, true story. Yeah. So that I said, hold on. So the the guy taking it in the bum. He's yeah, gay. he's gay. <laughs> yeah. Now the other guy giving it, putting it in his bum. No, he's not gay. He's a Kolobaras. Uh, Kolobaras. I go really, and so if I. This guy takes his dick yeah. and puts it in that guy's golo. <laughs> the guy getting it in the golo is the gay one, but that guy, he's off the hook. He's, he's not clear. gay. He's like a legend. He's, he's like, like a legend, he's like, that he's like guy. Golo, but us. And then <laughs> and he goes to me, yeah. And I said, and I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. He's not gay. Yeah. And then I do the joke. I go, if a guy can put uh, his dick in my bum, then he deserves to. Because, I mean, if you can, I mean, if you, I mean because everybody goes, well, gay people are, it's, it's a sensitive subject. Hold on. Men making love to men. You got to be tough. Yeah. A guy with a guy. A guy, a guy with a woman. A guy with a guy, that's tough. That's a challenge. You got to admire that. Yeah. yeah. So if a guy can put his dick in my bum, then he deserves it. You know, what happened? <laughs> he got me in a headlock. Uh, he twisted me around. He shoved it in. I mean, fuck, I give him credit, man. He's strong. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's the whole idea of it. And then that's the whole thing. So it's funny because some people will say, well, that you, you sound like you're, you know, you have a phobia of gays. Well, we're Greek. We fucking started all this shit. We it, mate. Lesbian. I said, my dad's from Sparta. Yeah. Those guys were drilling each other up the bum for years at war. Yeah. And my mom's from the donut bumper island fucking Lesbo. Yeah. I'm a Spartan lesbian. What do you mean I got phobias? We created this shit. <laughs> We're the ones that did it. So if you're the originators, the panagamithune ali, it doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> you know, it's so funny. And then, the, and then you know what happened? The guy goes, you know, I did my research, and I have to admit, uh, you're not wrong. He goes, the yeah. Spartan warriors. I said, why? I'm telling you, buddy. I can only talk about this. Anything you talk about, and if you do it in confidence, if you do it with confidence, you know the guy's not lying to you. Hey, you know, but the that. guy, because if you go to Greece and people listening, Greeks don't want to admit what I just said is right, yeah. but it is. Yeah. You've heard it from your weird relatives when you go to the village. Yeah. It's usually on one or two in the morning, they're testing you. <laughs> like, say, hey, spy put this, man. I go, what? <laughs> you know? And then he said, then he said, mono aptos putodini, then he know alos. And it's so funny, man. It's like, well, we got a word for it. Kolobaras. Kolobaras. That's yeah. it. Ass rammer, yeah. right? Call him by eye. The guy's an ass rammer. Now, now you're now you're you're asking me how did we get to ass fucking yeah, from yeah, Olympic yeah. Airways? I, I don't know. It's, it's no idea. Thing. I don't know. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, cheers, man. Cheers, really cheers, really cheers, cheers, cheers. Welcome, man. It's the Plomati talking we're, right we're now. We're off to a flying start. From, uh, Mitilini too, by the way. Mitilini, beautiful yeah. place, man. Make, make great uzo. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful place. I'm gonna hope I go there next year. Yeah, Mitilini. Well, look, we're off to a flying start, but we thought, given you've come to Australia, we thought we'd also give you an, an official Aussie welcome with our standard beer, which isn't fucking Foster's, let me tell you. I know. Why does everybody think it's Foster's? I don't know. We, it doesn't beer. exist. Foster's for beer. Yeah. So, look, this is, uh, this is VB. Ah. Oh, Vic- <laughs> Victoria Bitter. That's the one. Where did you get uh, that from, Tom? Well, mate, I just rub a lamp and it appears. Oh, my God. Wow. <laughs> Where did you pull that out of? <laughs> So this is VB. You can take that one. VB. Um, hold on a second. Better. You're drinking in the can. You don't have to pour yeah. it. Yeah. And look, this is this is the shit we drink. Generally wearing the Australian national costume, which is Bravo. which is thongs or flip flops, depending right, right, on how you. Right. That's right. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm wearing now. Oh dear. Right. Thongs so, and flip flops. I don't. National costume: thongs slash flip flops, board shorts. Or short shorts. Yep, a singlet, usually navy in color, with an Australian flag wrapped around you as a cape and a bucket hat. <laughs> this is this is real Australiana here. So Dude, no Vegemite. We can Vegemite. we've got some if you want. want some Vegemite. <laughs> I tried it once. It tastes like Golo on toast. <laughs> <laughs> What the hell you know, was that? It's good. I know yeah. people like it. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 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 
We should call this the freaking Boozer Jamboree That's podcast. Yeah, That's yeah, it. it. We're, we're, we're doing well for the uh, for, for the Australian uh, reputation. Victoria aren't we? Bitter. That's it. Is this from? Uh, it's actually a Victor- Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. I was going to yeah. say right. right. So every time I go to Melbourne, my cousins take me to St Kilda game. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, and they play Collingwood usually. Yeah. Every time I've gone, they won. St Kilda. I've been about four or five games. Whenever, for some reason, whenever I'm here, they play Collingwood or or some other top team. Yep. And St Kilda is a shit team, but they every are. time I've gone, they've never lost. <laughs> You're and I saw charm, I mate. saw Eric Bana at one of the games, and uh, I met Eric in uh, in L.A. at the premiere for Funny People. Right when he played <clears throat> with um, Leslie Mann and all those guys with uh, Adam Sandler, so he kind of saw. I remember we were talking, and I didn't realize he was such a mental patient for St. Kilda. Like, yeah. He goes fucking yeah, yeah. crazy, man. I was sitting close to him. Yeah, I go, Victorians are big for their AFL. They are. Big. They're mad. Yeah. They're mad about it, and I, and I get it because coming from Canada. And you know we're, we're cuckoo for hockey. That's yeah. our game, you know. Yeah, okay. And Canadian see, rules football. See, we're not we're not big on the AFL here. You're not big on it, no. No, we're all about the rugby league, national so, rugby league. The rugby the rugby league has teams also in Melbourne, right? One team. One. Yeah. Oh, just one team. Just yeah. one team. Yeah. Melbourne Queensland oh. has three. I think soon to be four next year. And how many four here? teams? Nine. 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 Yes. <laughs> okay, so it's. <laughs> Now, what's the, the what's the, uh, Australian rules football yes. and rugby? What what are the differences? Okay. So there's actually three. There's rugby <laughs> union, rugby league, right? And so two AFL. different sports. Rugby union, rugby league are two different right. sports, and then you've got the AFL. Sounds which like is... Greek restaurant owners. I got it. I got the Nixo Todikomo rugby league. <laughs> that's, 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 right. Right. that's right. That's right. That's exactly. That's what pretty much what happened. That's what happened. Yeah. They split. Yeah. We'll create own comp, and this that's is our it. rules. Hundred and what? It's a hundred and twenty odd years ago now. Yeah. You know, so it's like the, the Catholic and Orthodox Church. Kind of. Yeah. yeah that's you know, very a similar. thousand years ago, they were like, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Ten fifty four, I think. That's right. About that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So my team is the South Sydney Rabbitohs, who are right. owned by Russell Crowe, co-owned by Russell Crowe. Uh, is, uh, St. George <laughs> Dragons, or they're called Illawarra Dragons. St. George, George Illawarra yeah. Dragons. And this that's is what the we team follow. around here. This is the St. George area you're in now. This is, the, this is our team. Yeah. yeah. So if you go around here, most people around here, actually, you should be going for the Dragons. Tom. No, I shouldn't. This is our area. No. You live no. around here. I grew up in the, in the southeastern suburbs, mate. I did a movie with Russell Crowe. <laughs> Did you oh, really? really? Cinderella Man. Oh, yeah. Oh, the boxy. Play a reporter. I know Kitty. Russell. <laughs> you know Russell? I do. I used to I work did, for him. <laughs> I did a movie with him, and um, he was in Toronto. did it in Toronto. Right. And he's a big D. He loves coffee. And my friend has a coffee place called Gatto Nero in uh, Little Italy. And we were on set, and he had the guy Spud, that big... Mark Carroll. Oh, who Mark Carroll. Carroll. But who, guys are like seven feet tall. Who yeah. played for the Rabbitohs. Front rower. And he's uh, his bodyguard. Yep. I'll tell you a story about that guy. So, About Spud. Oh, my God. Well, here we go. Spud. Exclusive. So, Ron Howard is in the ring. Russell Crowe is playing James Braddock. Okay. Yep. The yep. Cinderella man, they call yeah, him. Yeah, that's right. The depression. Yep. He lost weight. It was Renee Zellweger, Paul Giamatti. I played John Savage, New York Times reporter. Mm-hmm. Mark Streeter is a Canadian middleweight boxing champion. Mm-hmm. Whenever they make these movies, they bring in guys that used to box. And it turns out, Russell kind of gives a right... Shot into Mark's uh, shoulder. Okay. And Mark instantly, being the boxer, comes back with a left. Yeah. And it hits Russell down. Knocked him out. Now, in regular life, that's what happens in boxing. Hmm. Not in a $100 million Universal Pictures movie. <laughs> so Russell went down, and you saw Ron Howard get up, Brian Grazer. I was right there. And... That spud guy flew into the ring, man. We're yeah. filming a movie. This isn't yeah. yep. Angelo Dundee was in the corner, who is oh, Muhammad yeah. Ali's. Yep. Then he was there. Russell had brought him as a consultant, yep. and they put him in the film. Mm-hmm. I became friends with him. Yep. Yeah. So they came into the film, and Russell's like, it's all right, mate. It's all right. Like, Russell's a tough guy, right? He goes, no, no, it's okay. Don't worry about it. But we were, he was having problems with his shoulder. Yeah, we right. were delaying on the film. No, this is a film with massive stars and massive money. Every day could cost them a million dollars. So who had the sore shoulder? Russell. Russell. Okay, yeah. Because he had lost so much weight for the thing. Okay. So basically, it's a boxing movie. Mm. We're boxing, but we're not boxing. Yeah. But the star of the Acting. film, you don't hit Rocky him. Balboa. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter yeah. 
who you are and what he did. Russell wanted it to be a thing. It was a good scene. Ron Howard was there, but that spud goes. He looks at that guy. He goes, oh, you fucking cunt. I'll rip your fucking <laughs> head off right there. Wow. And I, this guy's a monster, man. And I was like, who the fuck yeah. is this guy? He just flew into the ring. But he was watched out for Russell. Wow. Yeah. And it did. And I thought to myself, even though we were doing a movie, guys, it didn't matter. Yeah. Because, and this happened, and the film obviously got delayed. Russell kept getting hurt. Yeah. But it was so funny. My friend, so I, I told Russell, he goes, can't get a good coffee here in Toronto. I go, I know that my friends have the Gatto Nero in Little Italy. Yeah. All right. He goes, where is it? He goes, I'm going to go try it on Sunday. Well, doesn't he go there? He loves it. Yeah. So every day, so the Gatto Nero is on College Street in Toronto. We were filming at the old Maple Leaf Gardens where the Toronto Maple Leafs play because it looked right. like those old buildings in New York in the 30s. Yeah. Every morning, they'd send the guy to Gatto Nero, 120 coffees <laughs> by hand. And Russell <laughs> wanted them for the crew. So I go in there, Sal, Salvatore's dad is there. He goes, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> he goes, this a fucking uh, Crow Russell. He comes in uh, every day. He send the guy here. Do you want 100, 120 coffee? <laughs> My kid, what the fuck? But he was yeah, half joking. Yeah, yeah. 120 coffees a day yeah. is a lot of money yeah. for like three months. Oh. So he goes, anytime you, you come in now, thing. you don't pay for nothing here. I don't give a shit. You have whatever you want, you don't pay. Because he told his son, Michael, and he goes, Angel, because I told him, he goes, he goes, who told you to come here? He goes, I'm working with, uh, there's a Greek bloke on the thing, Angelo. <laughs> and he goes, uh, I don't even know if Russell remembers me now, so long ago. Yeah, yeah. But it was so funny because it was like, imagine they, because they didn't like the coffee. And when you're a superstar, you do things like that. Mm. Yeah. So they were able to get it 100, 120 coffees, like whatever, lattes, whatever. And they got their, the Italians goes, I got to bring my wife in. I got to bring my daughter in. And they're making them. <laughs> yeah. And the transport guys would take them a couple and bring them on home. set. Yeah. Wow. So he, were, he was happy. I never, I never paid for a meal there for years. Wow. Oh I've got to tell you about Mark Carroll or Spud. He was my favorite player growing up because he used to play for the Rabbitohs. He is one person that you want on your team mm. absolute mental case someone fucked with with a player on the on the rabbit side there. he was the first one in always the first one in and swinging yeah. he's not someone you wanted to you meet can, in a dark alley you gotta see youtube clips of him him oh. and paul harrigan a guy from newcastle oh, yeah. they were literally knocking each other out yeah. really and yeah. this is no pads this is no protection these no, guys helmet. are just hey, hammering going Tom. head first i saw him flying through the ring dude yeah. and it was it was like this like it was like an Airbus came into the yeah. freaking ring. I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> yeah, mate, and, and Russell, you know, Russell Crowe's a tough guy. He goes, "Don't worry about it, mate. It's okay. Don't worry about it." He hit me. I get him out. Yeah, classic. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. Hard. What a story. Very what a story. interesting. Well, look. Before we go any further, we actually have an announcement to make. We've got we've gone deep into this episode already. But Uzo Talk announcement. You ready for it? So, the Antenna Group. You know about Antenna in Greece, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. the channel. So. They've taken notice of our podcast and they have. they have a radio and podcasting service called soundis.gr and drum roll. I'll, I'll do that in post. <laughs> They've actually asked that we become the first English speaking program on their platform. That's really dope. So the first English speaking program in the antenna group. Uzo right. talk. How good is Can that? Can you believe Tom? it? We've been what? <laughs> six months into it. Yes. That's really good, guys. It. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank well, you. congratulations, Nick. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations <laughs> to you too, Tom, mate. So we'll be joining around 36 existing podcasts in their stable, all of them delivered in Greek, and we're going to be the first ever English content that they've got. It's pretty. It's a pretty big deal. Pre it, <laughs> it is, it is, mate. I don't, I'm not going to miss those great. midnight calls that we've been I know. doing with Greece. And, I know. Uh, talking about what the fuck we're going to do. What time is it in Greece now? Uh, who knows? Get your iPhone now. <laughs> Start making phone calls. <laughs> I know. Thank you to Sound Is. Thank you to Antenna Group for, for jumping on board. Thank you, Natalia, for, for all the... Thanks yeah. for reaching out to us. Absolutely. We're, we're Reached out to us and said, are you guys interested? Uh, fuck yeah, we're interested. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> as well. In yeah. a very Australian way, we're like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we're in. Yeah, we're in. <laughs> we're in. In like Flynn. That's Good it. for you guys. I mean, some... 
I think the Greeks now in Greece realize. I'm talking about food. Thought of that's okay. Off Go on my for mouth. it, mate. Well, we've happening. got we've got a spread happening here again. It's all about yeah. paella. That's <laughs> what this it is. really that's is Uzo talk paella. You do that's it right. It. <laughs> Thanks, brother. And um, the thing is, is that I think they're realizing now in Greece. A lot of them are realizing that they got to do work in the diaspora. Our the population of Greeks in the world is not increasing. Mm. It's actually not. It's a, I think the lowest birth rate in Europe is a Greece. So, is that right? True story. Mm. So they have to now realize we got to include everybody. But I've been told this, and through some of the comedy bits I've done, like the one about the expressions and everything's changing, yeah. he goes, <laughs> these were sayings that were forgotten in Greece. Mm. And he goes, you, we did, you did this video, and then all of a sudden, everybody's like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. And it was a revival. That, that one video, I think it's the one um, uh, Greek uh, sayings translated. Yes. It was over 12, 13 million views. Mate, one of them. Uh, yeah, and, it was, <laughs> and it was like, it's, and people were like, because these were sayings our parents kind of left. My dad left Greece in 1949, my mom. So, I mean, the whole idea was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, your bad weather. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and you know, the Greeks will correct me. Then in that, see, I go, no, it's how we heard it. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is that I think uh, because I, had, I have a form of dyslexia where if I look at something, I reverse right. it. And if it's Greek, I turn it to English. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought, you know, <laughs> I'm going to cook some fish on your yeah, lips. <laughs> What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> so we do it in the act. And then the Greeks were like, it is an expression. Yeah. But you see, they, sometimes they get mad at me because yeah. they're like, you're making fun of us. No, 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 no. I didn't make fun of you. I said, I'm taking what we say in Greek, mm. yep. translating it to English. And you never it. thought of it. Exactly. That's the difference. Yep. That You never thought of these things that I did. Yep. And I always saw it and I thought, well, let me just do this bit. And then when I went to Greece in Tavro, where we did a night in Athens where I filmed it, the Greeks loved it. Yep. Because they were like, came, come, and then all of a sudden now, I could tell you, I probably got 100,000 of them sent to me on social media. Yep. I mean, there's all kinds of them that yeah, you yeah. can get from, depends what part of Greece you're in. Yeah. So in a way, the diaspora, us children of the diaspora, have stirred up the pot in Greece yep. for them, and they know this now. Yeah. They do know it. Is a lot of comedy lost on the Greeks over there, do you think? Like, do they not get it? Is it just, is it no, purely for the diaspora? See, when I went to do my comedy special, comedy was there, but it wasn't there. Hmm. Now it's really taken off. There's some really good Greek comedians. Uh, uh, Katarina Vrana, who I met mm -hmm. in Australia a few years ago. Mm. Uh, George Zakharopoulos, um, you know, Yorgos Hadzipavlo, Labros Fis Fis. There's... Uh, they got Chrysula, who's really funny. There's a lot of good Greek comics now. Yeah. There's a lot of good talent in Greece. And what I was trying to tell the guys, I said, okay, so <clears throat> a lot of the guys want to come over to America or Canada or here. Mm. I said, okay, here's the difference. I said, you're funny. You talk too fast. Mm, yeah, so true. we can't, you can't, <laughs> you know, when I was working with some of them in Greece, I heard the crowd laughing. Yeah. I got every second or third word, and I, I'm trying to explain to them. <laughs> I say we don't speak Greek. Yeah, yeah. All, we speak Greek, like yeah. hey, he says that we, we have conversational Greek. We yeah. don't speak it day and night. Yeah. It's not our thing. Yeah. Well, exactly. I thought I could speak Greek and understand until I got degrees. And I'm trying to oh, watch yeah. the news. I go, oh, what the oh, fuck? The is news. Like, watch the, the news. Oh, yeah, the news. oh my like, god. You know, and I and I do that in my act. I talk about the and that's how I speak. I talk about the Cyprus speak. I talk about the Cyprus. Look, the Jenny Kulaps Cyprus tell you. Bing, 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 bing. And it's like, what just happened? You know, the guy he muffles, he talks. I asked my mom. Yeah, she understood everything. Like, yeah. <laughs> what did you understand? I said. So I think you're right. You're right because what yeah. happens, and I've told them. I said, you guys are funny, but you gotta slow it down. Yeah. yeah. For the Greek, because I said we can't, yeah. we can't process it. Yeah. No, we need Absolutely. a translator. I actually <clears throat> asked for a translator. What the hell did he just? So say? The, and I told them, translating in English. But in you Greek. see, they're all speaking English now yeah. in Greece. Yeah. So my stuff because. Here's the advantage I have is because I have Greek, understand it, and I understand the nuances of it. Yep. So it's a different thing. So I'm not claiming to be a Greek uh, professor of, of language. <laughs> so when I go to Greece, I go, I'm going to speak Greek the way you guys speak English. Yep. 
So we're on the same plateau. Good okay. Analogy. okay. So I think they read the Greek, and I think that's why it's a good way to put it. They like it. They like they like what I'm doing because they can relate to it because yeah. they all have relatives. Every one of them has a relative in Sydney, Melbourne, Montreal, New York, Vancouver. You know, it doesn't Johannesburg. They all have relatives. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Because Greeks do, every Greek in the world does one thing every year. They, we're like the fucking Canadian geese. We migrate back to the Horia. <laughs> I mean, they struggle to leave the village. And every, every, every summer, all the Greeks get together. They should yeah. do like a David Attenborough uh, video. <laughs> the Greek immigrants all come back in <laughs> June to August. And they plug up the Horia. And, and then, have you ever noticed? Because... It's so true, though. And I, I so <clears throat> I did a funny, interesting thing here. 2016, yep. I was at the Vanilla Cafe in Oakley. Yes. Okay, in Melbourne. In Melbourne. Yep. Yeah. Which is a beautiful little suburb that's Full all Greeks. Greeks. Yes. And actually, that was more Greek than Glifada was in Greece, I thought, going yep. to that one there. It really yeah, is. It's true. Point. So the guy says to me, um, you know, where my dad's village is from, Greece, Daphne, which is mm. south. Not the mental institution, which could be, re- <laughs> but that one from Greece, <laughs> south of Sparta. Yeah. There's a lot of my dad's friends, the Khoriani, who are from there, who mm-hmm. live in Melbourne. Shit. And wow. I knew this a lot. There's actually more living in Melbourne than in the Khorio now. <clears throat> so the guy goes to me, we got some of your relatives, uh, people that you knew, your family. They want to get together and meet with you. So Bill Zografos, who works with the TV station, goes, I'm going to come and film it. Okay. I go, Positartune, how many? 15, 20 people are going to show up. Okay, yeah. cool. We'll go have lunch, you know. One Say family. hello, people. Yeah. 185 people show You're up. you kidding. 185 people. It's small. small. Now, yeah. here's the thing I found fascinating. They showed up. Whether we were in Melbourne, whether we were in Montreal, whether we were, it was the same if you if I take you two and bring it to Canada, yep. those picnics and stuff, you're gonna sit there, you're gonna hear my accent with yep. most people. Yep. Once it's Greek and stuff, you're gonna sit there and I guarantee you you're gonna think you're back in Sydney. Yep. Or those church it's the same and yep. what I realized, whether it was Sydney, whether it was Johannesburg or London or all the places I've been to, when it came to that guys, yep. it was the same. Yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> I said why don't we do a reunion in Daphne? It was 2016. Yep. Why don't we do a reunion in 2019 in my dad's village? August 15, which I know is winter for you guys. Mm-hmm. The Cape d'Augusto, the Cape d'Augusto well. which ah, is, okay. you know, Maria, I mean, yeah, my mom's yeah. name day, Despina, yep. Pano, Peter, you know. Yeah. So the guy goes, I said, uh, and when they asked me in Melbourne, 2016. So this originated in Melbourne. Melbourne. It happened in Melbourne. What? I got the idea. I saw all, because all these people told me I knew your grandfather. I knew your dad. One guy's crying. Wow. 15 years old, last time he saw my dad. Wow. So it got really emotional. So you met a guy that met your dad. He knew my dad. They came up from the village together. They went to Pirea, out to the port. One got on a ship to Australia. One got on a ship to Canada. Kidding. Wow. Imagine 15 year old after the war. And it's funny because I used to ask my dad, I go, why'd you go to Canada? He goes, me poskera me You think think your parents knew where they were going? No. My parents didn't know. But imagine the balls on them. They oh, went. Yeah. yeah, definitely. They look at now. Look at us. We're, we're uh, look, look at this. We're doing a pod. You have a beautiful place here. Yeah. You're doing a pod. We're doing a podcast about our culture and life mm. because somebody in our yep. family and our and our legacy yep. got on a fucking ship and went mm. somewhere. They yep. didn't know where they were going. That's right. That's that's, that's to me brave. Yeah. And and, and young. And young, like 15 years yeah. old. So the guy's that's bawling. Huge. Right. I saw your dad. My dad never saw him again. My dad died of yeah. Alzheimer's, unfortunately. Right. Wow. So I said, look, I came in my head and I said, you know what? Why don't we do a World Daphne Day? <laughs> FMA from my ass. I pulled it out. <laughs> Let's do a World Daphne Day. We're going to go to Daphne 2019 uh, on August 15, one day from around the world. We're going to, anybody who's, and what I said was people from Daphne, friends of people from Daphne, 
you know, whatever. Just we're going to do this thing. Mm-hmm. That next day, I do a salida. I do a page in mm-hmm. Facebook mm-hmm. called World Daphne Day. And yep. I put the date. It was 2016. Yep. I put the date 2019. I leave it. I invite some people and people start inviting people. Mm. And our only reference to this, guys, was the Facebook page. Yep. And I said, 2019, I want to take my daughter to see it. I took my wife. My mom came. So speed up now. It's three years later. See ya, see ya. So the other thing I like about Greeks, they only need an excuse to do something. Mm. <laughs> so the guy goes, you know, we weren't going to go to Greece. <laughs> yeah. So if they take anything, you know, it's Plumati Day. We got to yeah. go to Greece. The guy goes, no, I want to go to Greece. I want to go to this thing. So all of a sudden, I get a call from the proedro of the village, Yanni. Yeah. And he goes, Yanni, I go, I want to go to the house. I said, I want to go to the house. No, I want to go to the house. I want to go to the house. I want to go to the house. All of a sudden, because I've been to Greece, the newspapers were calling. Alpha TV called the station. All these people were calling. And and I swear it was at that vanilla cafe in Melbourne. And uh, yeah, Neil Cosmos did an article yes. about it. Yep. So a month before I get another phone call and I'm still in LA and he goes to me, uh, I go, nah. now one thing about Greeks, the when, stress. It comes, you know, when, it, oh, when it comes to numbers, they never give you numbers. Oh, uh, yeah. That's against the rules being Greek. Yeah. It's, it's, it's always a lot. Even with weddings. Yeah, everything. Thanks, Saro. Yeah. Now, I know. Dio tria. Dio tria, <laughs> Now, you know something's going to be good when they don't fucking know the numbers, right? Yeah. So I said, okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> so we go there. Now, it's August 15th. You know, and Sparta, all the, all the villages have the Panigiria, right? So he yep. goes, well, it's a, it's a big day. Day comes, we go to the village. 2,200 people showed up. Wow. Kidding. And the village is 700. I was expecting 100, 150. Australia, Germany, Canada, America, South Africa. Unbelievable. Kidding. All around Thessaloniki, London, for Berlin. People were coming from every, They ran out of chairs. They had to go to the other Korea and get chairs. You're kidding. And all the tavernas were full speed making money. What a story. Yeah. I think, and they won't admit it. They didn't want to tell me because they thought, oh, I'm going to shake them down for cash. No. I go, no. I said, I did. So I, he goes, what are we going to do? So I went, I did a show. So they had built the stage and I got up there and I talked about how this happened. And I talked about my dad's dreams about the village and mm. all the stuff. And it was a hundred, you know, it's a hundred degrees, about 35 Celsius. Yeah, sure. In, in you know, Greece, Greece, it's hot as in shit. In August. Fuck. In yeah. August. Yeah. But I didn't care. And I saw my daughter there. With all the kids running around, mm. and it made me realize, even though my dad wasn't there, I said it made me happy to know that for one day mm. that we went back to the village, I was mm. able to take my daughter and everybody there and do something out of uh, thin air. Yeah. They couldn't, they couldn't grasp the concept. Yeah. Mm. And he goes, "Mani kata leveno." And then the, he goes, "Me perna." I said because I think they like the idea mm. that we, the children that left of the children, you know, now we're coming back to Greece. Mm. And now they, I think they see the value in that right now. They mm. see that. Yeah. What you guys are doing right here with Uzo Talk, mm. we're having fun. But look what we're talking about. Mm. People want to hear these stories. And it's not just me. Anybody's stories are great, like George the Fighter, or you get Nico the Baker. It doesn't matter. You bring, yeah. you bring people in, everybody's got a story. Yeah. Mm. And this one happened in Greece, and then it, it happened, and it happened, and I think a news agency in Canada tried to say it was Toronto, because they felt like idiots now. And they go, oh, I think it was at a cafe in Toronto. Well, no, no, it was a cafe in Melbourne, <laughs> yeah. Australia. And, that, and this is what started it, the idea. Mm. So now they're calling me a Carmenalo. Yeah. They want to, wow. They want it every year now. <laughs> they want to do it. Like, that would have been huge, even Dude. for their economy. Yeah, I was just going to say. They had people coming in, guys. I was so happy. The guys said, "You made our summer." Yeah. You made our summer with this. They were packed. Yeah, I can imagine. But that. imagine That's it was 2019. Mm. What happened 2020? Yeah. yeah How did we pick the numbers? But you know, the numerology worked. Twelve two zero one nine. So it was, it worked. But I said, imagine if this was 2020, it would have been a bust. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, those are the kind of things that, and I think now 
I'm not surprised that those guys are going to bring you guys on with it now. They realize now they got to be inclusive of this because th these are stories and things that they forgot that we're mm. reminding them about yeah. now. Yeah. Well, that's what they say. We're more Greek than the Greeks yep. in yeah. Greece. Yep. They're, they're trying to get more Anglified. We're going back to our roots. We're going through the other way. Yeah. yeah, definitely. One of the comments that was made to us from over there was that listening to us was like almost like looking at Greece through rose-colored glasses. Right. In a good way, in the sense that it was reminding people of, oh yeah, shit, we do have all these great things as well. It's not all this doom and gloom. Well, that's the, th you just hit it on the head, I think. Look, in fairness to them, they've been beaten up. Mm. They've never left Greece alone. Then this whole thing with the, you know, with the uh, IMF crisis, yep. mm. which in my opinion, fucked the Germans and fucked the French because mm. they manipulated that whole market. They took the lion's share of it mm. and they tried to make Greece the scapegoat. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? You know, with the Germans, it's like, forget it. You know, I, I mean, I'm thinking all the shit you guys did, and now you're going to try to blame it on Greece. Mm. And the Greeks were, they, they were resistant in World War II, and they're resistant now. But yeah. I think now with they've changed yeah. things around a lot. We've actually paid all that debt back, haven't it's all, we? It's all paid off. Yeah. How you know, not Parta. And I bet you they even gave him a tip. <laughs> Parta <laughs> que fata. Parta que fata. Good for the Greeks, man. Yeah, good on Oh, it. dear. That's great. Oh, I love it. Love your passion, mate. Well, yeah. what was it like growing up Greek in Canada? Nick's a little bit older than I am, so he caught the back end of a lot of racism. Was it the same in, in Canada? Well, it's funny you say that because I notice now that I live in America, they got it. They were very prejudiced about Greeks. Right. So, AHEPA, which is the American Hellenic Educational mm. Progressive Association, was formed in 1922. We got one here. You, got, you have a branch here, I think. Rockdale. We do. Over here. And it Five was, minutes drive from here. From here. They, they made that organ In 1922, there were signs in Atlanta, Georgia, that said, no Jews, no blacks, no Greeks. Wow. Oh, so, they, they, it was included. And if you look at the history of America... Iakovos, in 1964 at Selma, the crossing of the bridge with Dr. Martin Luther King, mm. when he was doing the peaceful march, if you look to his right, it was the leader of the Greek Orthodox, Orthodox. Church oh, yes. of America. Mm. And they told him not to do it. Yep. He said, mi pas, mi tokanis, but the Greeks, because we understand Philotimo and we understand mm. persecution of people's rights and freedoms, yep. if anybody understands it, we do. And I've had this argument with people in the States who go, well, you're a white guy. I go, we're white ethnic. But I said, all this stuff you're talking about, we went through it too. For 400 and years. For 400 years. And I said, if you look at this article, they see that's a problem. That's why you need this platform to tell people, to educate people, to understand. I said, on the right of Dr. Martin Luther King was the leader of the Greek church of America, Yakovos, yeah. right beside him. Mm. And I said, and, and a couple of rabbis were there too, the Jews went, and the thing is this, because they told him not to go, but he said they knew the pain and the progression of people, and they supported that. So whenever they come to me and tell me that you guys are saying, oh, whoa, 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 wait a second, man, you're maybe right color, wrong people, I said. Yeah. We were right beside you, brother. We were right there beside you. Yeah. Everything. So I think they were discouraged to speak Greek in America. So they wouldn't speak Greek. And now they regret it. A lot of them that mm. I talk to regret it because they're mm. like, well, they're almost like, uh, mm. like I'll go there and, and they go, I go, yes, uh, they go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We, we don't speak. We weren't born in Greece like you. I go, I was born in Canada. <laughs> now, for me growing up, my dad said in 19, in the 50s in Canada, the Greeks were called DPs, displaced people. I'm kidding. Right. Fucking okay. DPs, they called them. Mm. And that's what they would call them. So my dad said he experienced the racism. But I think Canada, as a multicultural country, was one of the first ones to be multicultural. When I went first grade in Canada, none of us could speak English because mm. our moms were all speaking Greek. Hmm. That was me. Yeah, you. So they that all thought we were special needs, right? They we, go, we call it uh, ESL here, English yeah. Second Language. Yeah, 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 yeah right, exactly. <laughs> so I think what, hap what happened there, guys, I think what happened there was that in Canada, in my era, there was some of it. They make, the kids yep. would make fun of it. We beat the fuck out of them if they made fun of us. 
And then because, uh, and then it was like, it became that kind of a thing. But I noticed now as it progressed, I'll say this about Canada, multiculturally speaking, and it was one of those countries. And I know that Australia and America and other places, it took longer Yep. because they, they just had a, a predisposed uh, idea of how the world should be. Mm. And, you know, with America, with uh, slavery and racism and all that kind of stuff, I mean, you, I'm not blaming them. I, I mean, they went through this. But then you hear these stories now that in, like, Massachusetts and other places that where they wouldn't allow black Americans to eat, the Greeks would let them in the diners to eat. Yeah, I saw that story recently. It is, actually. It's a yeah. true story. So the Greeks never, it's the same thing in World War II with the Jews. When the rest of Europe was pointing them out, the Greeks were hiding them in the Horafia. Protect them. Yeah. Because the Greeks didn't see them as Jews. They saw them as Greeks. And they said, you know, we're going to protect our citizens. It's people. It's humans. The humans. And that's the thing. I think that's the compassion, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah, we'll fight with each other. That Horio, they're idiots, they're idiots. But threatened as a whole, I think threatened as a whole, the people you don't want to fuck with are Greeks. Mm. Threatened as a whole, they're going to take you down, man. Once we unite. (laughs) Once they unite. It's dangerous. Look at 2004 Hero Cup. Mm. Oh, wow. <laughs> have you seen the movie yet the mo- oh, no, King, King Otto, Otto. King I haven't Otto. seen it yet I want to no. see I heard it's fantastic yeah, yeah we had it here didn't my friend said he was in the theater standing up standing old yeah. in the middle of the film and all they're all we're, we're well, all crazy can I tell you Ange yeah. Bay Street I was just, just going to say here, yeah. they blocked the street whole street we that's what in Toronto yeah we had we got to the local council to put a screen up. We had a projector on no there. No shit. Above the, the RSL club. Yeah. I saw it on the news then. And I was, was living in Toronto. Massive, yeah. So Danforth Avenue in Toronto yep. where it was from Broadview all the way to Jones. Yep. So that night, so here's the deal. At that time, I'm dating this really hot Portuguese girl. <laughs> and her name's Susie. And she's in, <laughs> and, and, and she was hot, like. I mean, said the hot. Right? You didn't get lucky that but, night, though. No. What happened? She goes, "Oh, I'm going with my cousins and brothers. We're going to go watch the soccer game. That was the last. You yep. come with me." I go, "What? <laughs> I'm going to go where? With the Portuguese? I go, no, no. I got to go with my people. She's yeah. what are you talking about. She goes, "You have sex with me." I go, "You have sex with me." I go, "It's fair enough." She goes, "Well, um." <laughs> I said, because what happened, we were going to my friend's restaurant in Danforth. Yeah. 1994, I went to the World Cup okay. in Boston. And we didn't even score a fucking goal, right? It was highly up. It didn't matter. We were so happy to be there. We're yep. good to be there. We were good to be there. So what happened, guys? We sat down in the chairs, right? So you're sitting where you are. He's sitting where you uh, And there's eight of us in my friend's uh, bar. Mm-hmm. Game one comes up. Karagounis gets the ball, <laughs> kicks it. Goal. <laughs> we're stunned. We yep. actually scored a goal. Forget winning a game. And we were like, shit, we scored a goal. Mm. Then the second one goes in. We win the game two to one. We're like, okay, two to one. We won a game. <laughs> what happens against now? Portugal <laughs> in Portugal. Mm. Game two uh, comes out now. Spain. Now, you know the Greeks. Eh, tora, thafame, vilo, tora. Hispania, yeah. ranked number three in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Real positive yeah. stuff. Yeah. You know the, how positive we got. Yeah. We watched the game. Now, from eight people, now there's about 20. Yeah. Okay? We watched the game now. All of a sudden, same seats where we were. There's a core of us, same seats. One, one tie, which was like unheard of. Like We uh, kind of stay, I scored that one goal. Yep. And then it was like one, one tie against Spain. And we're like, fuck. What's going on here? What's going on here? Now, the team that should have been easy to beat, which was was Russia. Russia. But they had that Shevchenko or the other guy, whatever they had. Yeah. Russia won the game, but Karisteas scored the one goal, if you Mm. remember. That's right. That one goal put us... We were tied with Spain. Yeah, the four and yes. against. The four against. We had one more yeah. than the other team, and that put us in the next round. Yeah. So we slot into the second spot. Second spot. Yeah. Portugal first, we'll second. And then Greece Just. Second. Yeah. Just. Now it's game, uh, quarterfinal game, France. Jidan, Henri, uh, Tora. Yeah. Forget so it. <laughs> that day I'm hosting the Ethnic Journalist Awards in Toronto. Mm. I'm hosting it that night. And uh, there's a game. So I went and she was like, we'll come in. Uh, we'll do the sound check and warm up. And then I'm freaking out. I got to go see the game. They're calling me. Puisa Malakaila. Pretty many. The chair's waiting. 
Yeah. Puisa, U- Ususi. Yeah. You're gonna fucking, we're gonna lose. And I'm, and I'm like, oh my shit. Is yeah. Greece gonna lose today because I'm not going to the game? So the guy goes, okay, so Angela, we're gonna hang around. I go, okay, do we get the technical? Go, I'll be back in two hours. No, no, you can't go. I go, I'm going. You can't go. I'm going. It's Greece is playing France. There's a chair for me. I took the subway straight there. I go, I have to go. You understand? The game had just started. <laughs> The guy goes, well, I said, oh, fuck you. I just left. I didn't care. I didn't care. Like, fire me today. To see, see me now, you can fire me. I don't care. I get there, guys. I get there. They were yelling at me. Jesus, Malaca, Pitelos, this and that. Yeah. No, no kidding, guys. I get there. About seven minutes later, Zagorakis, Karistas. <laughs> Boom. Fucking header, the Greek score. <laughs> Place goes nuts. <laughs> Somehow we hang on. Somehow we hang on, and we beat France. Now we're convinced that we have to be We've in these chance. chairs. Yeah. Bip and Akatsumis Skareklas. Yeah. Next team now is Czech Republic. They mm-hmm. were favored to win. Now we're there at a game and we're watching it. Now, now the bars guys are packed. Mm. Nobody's you can't get a Suvlaki or Feta. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're, forget it. That bars yeah. are jam. We're busting now. Like, yeah. is this gonna really happen? We're watching Ned, remember Nedved and all those guys that were playing. Yeah. These guys were the best. Yeah. Best of the best. <laughs> Last corner kick, extra minutes. Extra time. It was Vasinas, extra time. Vasinas puts it over there. Delas, that tall guy, comes yeah, head, heads it in, buddy. We Dude, if, it. I'm like, getting goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, it was like a fucking eruption on Dan Forther. I'm sure you guys, yeah, it yeah. erupted. We went mental. Yeah. Like that night, you thought we won that night. We are out. Toronto cops were out. Greeks were screaming and yelling now, this and that. <clears throat> now, let's put things in perspective. I haven't had sex for about uh, 10 days now <laughs> with the hot Portuguese girl because I have to be with my Greek people. Yeah, priority. She, she was really hot. A massive sacrifice. And I was fucking caving in. Not worth it. But I said, I can't. Yeah. I can't do it for my, I have to do this for my papu. Yeah. I have to do this for my dad. And it's superstition and at this point. For superstition. Yeah. She kept calling me up. I'm just wearing something. Slowly again, let's come over. She was trying to get sex me to go over with the Portuguese. I wouldn't do it. And you had your Hadistea uh, shirt on. And I, I said, no, I can't. The Boro. I mean, you know what? I kept beating off thinking of Greece. <laughs> I go, you're my mistress right now. I was beating off going, you better fucking win, Greece. Because yeah. I may never have sex with this woman again. So what ha- what happens? What happens? The last game comes now. Now, uh, Danforth Avenue is one part of Toronto, and College Street where the Portuguese is another. The police have divided it up because it's basically who that Figo, Ronaldo. Yeah, Messi. <clears throat> again, defense. We know what happened. The game. Yeah. Calistea scores again. Boom. When the whistle went. 53rd minute, something like that. That's it. It was over. Yes. And then it was like like you guys said. We were on Danforth Avenue, Greek Town, Toronto. Had to be the 100,000 Greeks on Danforth. They say we could keep it till midnight. Yeah, we were there till 6 in the morning. Nobody left. The guy, yeah. the cops were the big, you know, the big cops like in Canada yeah. with the horses. The guy goes, they'd never seen anything like it. I go... I said to the one cop, this will never happen again. Do you understand? We were 500 to one odds to win. We were the last team that ever, they think of win this cup and we want it. We're going to enjoy the moment. And the cops were like, they kept trying to open the roads. They wouldn't leave. Yeah. (laughs) And the guy was on the radio going, oh, the Greeks are still partying. It's three in the morning. Kicking soccer balls. Restaurants open. Beers. We were serving booze. They didn't, the city inspectors, Kestus, they didn't yeah. matter. The guy goes, we couldn't do nothing. You guys were so in elation. Yeah. And that was the year we had the Olympics. Yep. And we had... And was, Eurovision. And Eurovision and Big Fat Greek Wedding. Yeah. Everything right. came out at the same time. My son was born. I remember there how big go. it was yes. for being Greeks. Yeah. We, we had... The way you just described it was exactly yeah. the same. He, see this couch here? Exactly the same. How you just described it. Don't move it. nothing. We were here. Same people had to sit. Petros Kalouris was yeah, here. Yeah. He had to sit here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Same huh? spot. We, okay, Bay five, Street. Five o'clock in the morning was it? Five or six in the morning or four in was the morning. Here. Bay yeah. Street, 400 metres down the road. It was like that. Once they won, Grand Parade, as you can see, is a right, massive, right, right. massive main road. The Greeks ended up blocking that main yeah. road. 
awesome. It, it, so we, we already had they, the, the, the local authorities blocked off Bay Street, which right. is fine. Had a big screen. Right. It was like maybe 10,000. It was heaps of people. Every Greek known to man was there. We're talking about Breath and Asta, rugby league players. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. Well, what about um, the Fox okay. Sports commentator? What's his name? We used to have the, the moustache. He was... He, he was dancing in the streets there like like crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was for the Greeks. Yeah, he's yeah. A, a Greek guy. He's a Greek guy. I can't, I can't remember what his name is. Uh, sorry, man. Sports. Yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Well, I forgot. They're all there. And then Grand Parade. Every truck, oh, every truck, taxi, even police. Look, there was Greek cops. Greek cops. There's great. Yeah, mate. Greek truck drivers. Greek cabbies. They're all beeping, honking. And it was. It started at three in the morning or four in the morning. I think it was. And then it finished by about six or seven. Virtually, we had blocked the street. Cars Andy Pascalides was his name. Andy, oh, he's Andy. A legend. Absolute How? Legend. Let me ask you. Yeah, we we got to witness that once in our life. Yeah, we'll never see it. Again. We're no. never I, I in our lifetime. I mean, think about it. Like, that was bigger than the Olympics, dude. That was bigger than it. They yeah. they're calling it the biggest sports upset of the century, yeah. and it is. Co- try to find That's another huge. comparison. There, there's been others, yeah. mm. but for a team like Greece. To be five hundred to one odds, and I saw that guy. The guy lives in Tottenham, England. Yep. That waiter. Oh yeah. So when I was when I was I saw the guy comes out. He goes. He had a vision. I, I gotta find it. Awesome. He had a vision yeah. that God oh. said that Greece was gonna win the Euro. Oh wow. He took twenty thousand pounds. Jesus. And he bet Greece to win at one of those Ladbrokes. You know the British have yeah, those yeah, places. Yeah, yeah. They went in and they were like, what? Because at one point, I think the odds were 750 to 1, and they said, okay, that's the tip. We'll give you 500 to 1. Jesus. Now you're talking yeah. Italy, Germany, Holland, England, but Greece? Yeah. The guy goes, O Theos, Mudukse, Mudikse, Tokipolo, with Zag- He said he envisions Zagoraki holding the cup. The guy's a heretic. I don't know where he's from. He puts 20 <laughs> grand in his fucking savings. Yeah. Gets what a million pounds. Wow! When Holy they won, shit. and and when they asked the guy, it was on news. He goes, "God showed me that the Greeks were going to win." Now, is the guy crazy, or did he really see it? Fuck, who knows? Who would put twenty thousand pounds on a five hundred to one shot? Only yeah. fucking Greeks would do yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. We're Greeks mad. are big part. I don't know what they're like in Canada, but here in Sydney or in Melbourne, they're all big punters. Gamble a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, every, it's the same way. My dad was like that. It's huge. Yeah. And it's in our blood. I have it too. I got to be careful. <laughs> you know how many Greeks loaded up on that tournament? They won. And cleaned up. They cleaned up. I still can't believe my it. My cousin happened. John was one Seriously. of them. All my cousins. How many years later now? It's, it's tw- 18 years later. It's nearly 20 it's 18 years, years. But I want to see that movie, King Otto. Yeah. I heard it's... My friend saw it, and he said it's... They're doing screenings in the state. I keep missing it. But we lived it. So I, I want to see the yeah. perspective. And he said it took a gut. Ironically, it was a German coach. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they couldn't speak the same language. And the coach said this was... He saw one of the most talented teams he'd ever seen. Mm. But there was no organization. Yeah. It takes a German to come in and organize the Greeks. Jeez, but, sort of but look what happened. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They gave him honorary Greek citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. Give him an island. I think they gave him an island. They yeah. gave him some virgins. I don't know. They gave him everything. <laughs> I would. Take yeah, my yeah, yeah. sister, man. We won absolutely. the Euro Cup. Them and Yazi. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But isn't, isn't it funny that for us, I think something like that in Europe, because... Even the Italians are, you know, look at the Italians. Last two World Cups, they haven't yeah. qualified. They're pissed. Yeah. And who do they lose to? I'm, I'm working on a cruise ship, and I'm watching the game. North Macedonia. North Macedonia. Mm. So this guy's, uh, you know, this guy's Vincenzo. He's one of the officers on the ship I'm working on. At Royal Caribbean, beautiful ship. We're at the sports bar watching. Italy, all Italy needs is a tie. A draw. Or a draw. And they're going to go to the World Cup, right? And North Macedonia, okay. I'm watching the game, I go, well, I, I said, don't worry, Italy's going to get in. <laughs> 93rd minute. It was like watching Greece check. The guy takes a kick, coming outside of the box, coming in, wax it, goes right through everybody, boom, goes in the net. <laughs> With, what, 40 seconds left, North Macedonia beats... Italy. Italy, which Power is... Powerhouse. Power, top three teams in the world? 
just won the Euro. And they just won the Euro. And you saw the guy's face. And he goes, I, I don't believe what did just happened. <laughs> I don't, tell me this is a dream. I go, it's not a dream, dude. The fucking Masseys kicked one in on you. <laughs> now, the guy goes to me, but it's bullshit. I go, for North Macedonia, that was their Euro Cup. Yeah. Yep. Now, did they get in? They didn't get into the... No, uh, no. They lost to Portugal. So. They lost. Yeah. But talk about spoiling. Because I think the Italians went in there. And I think that's a good team. Mm. I think the Italians went in there maybe a little cocky. Yeah. yeah. You know? Well, they just won the Euro. And they won the Euro, but then you lose to North Macedonia. Yeah. And not make the World Cup. It's massive. That's fucking... But this team in but, Europe, not in the World Cup. Yeah. But guess who did make a World Cup? Canada. Really? Oh, wow. For the first time, wow. the Canadians are going to the World Cup. Wow. Kidding. Canada. Fantastic. Can you fu- I, my friend calls me up. He's really high smoking weed. He goes, bro, got to tell you something, man. <laughs> what? He's fucking Canada went to the World Cup. He's going to the World Cup. I go, what? How much weed are you smoking? <laughs> bro, I'm trying to check. Go Google it. I go Google. Canada had beaten. So Canada and America, they had beaten all the teams like in the North America division, yeah. Mexico, Honduras, Costa wow. Rica, yeah. Canada's number one. So Canada is going to the World Cup. Fantastic. Canada. Well done. So now all the Greeks and there, Italians that aren't in the World Cup, now they're Canada. all Canadians. Yeah. Now we're going to go for Canada and that's our team. Is, is they should. Are is there any fun, Greeks though? in the Canadian team? I believe there's, this is weird. I believe there's one Greek. Yeah. One Serbian, one Croatian, two Italians, African. Because, you know, it's like Australia. Yeah, it's like us. Everybody's from all over. Yeah. yeah. And all those players are there. And they're coming there. And uh, they're going to the World Cup in Fantastic. Qatar in November. Yeah. yeah. Wow. In the heat. Isn't it funny, though? I mean, we, we don't normally watch too much football or soccer. or however you, Let's call it football, right? We don't watch it that much. But when the World Cup is on, especially yeah, if Greece or, Austra- yeah, or Australia sure, sure, is in it deal. in particular, we're in on it, right? Sure. Even though we don't watch it that much, one of the harshest things, one of the one of the hardest things to take when Australia made the uh, made the finals mm. and we got knocked out by Italy with the uh, the, I di- remember, I remember the dive. Luke, I remember that. Lucas you guys, Neal. you guys had a yes. really good team that year. Yes, I thought Australia cool. were going to go all the way. Actually, of course, hitting. Yeah, of yes, hitting coach team. That's right, um, and and Lucas Neal, two thousand six, I think it was. So Toddy took a dive, and they t- they yeah, had a penalty Lucas Neal penalty, and they got you it. guys got burned, and yeah, it's I think still hot. It would have been in the semis if he won that. <laughs> yeah, it still hot. Anyway, John Aloisio scoring that uh, the penalty kick at, at Sydney Football Stadium, Stadium Australia against uh, Uruguay. Yes, Stadium that Australia. Was it was massive. That really, was nearly as big. That as was the that was us team. making the World Cup for the, the first, first time. time. It had never happened before. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it did actually. Uruguay yeah. once, once before, 70, 74, 72, that's right. 74, something like that. I mean, maybe Canada has been there once before. I can't remember. Yeah, but unbelievable. So, Uruguay was here in Australia playing you guys. That's right. And you guys scored with the the one goal. It's a I big think deal. it was one nil there. Uruguay won one nil mm-hmm. in Montevideo, and we had to win one nil here. Oh no! Actually, we scored a goal. It was one nil here, so therefore it was a tie. And it got to extra time and then penalty shootout. Yeah. And Mark Swartzer saved a couple of goals. Yep. And John Aloisio lined up, put it in, and that was it. Aloisi, uh, Johnny, Aloisi. Aloisi, Johnny, That's it. I don't even know the guy, and I like him already. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't you find that's what we need now after all this COVID bullshit? We need something yeah. that, that lifts people's lifts spirits spirit. up. Absolutely. I think I, I'm starting to realize why. Now that I'm coming back with the comedy guys, it's the shows are sold out. Yeah, people are. I mean, here in Australia, man, they got. They're, we're trying to add a third show in Melbourne. Oh, yeah, wow. well, and and Sydney's pretty much sold out. But I, I'm not saying it like, like. Look, I'm saying like, I realize that people want to escape from their bullshit. Two years of being cooped up, I yeah. think it, everywhere, not here, everywhere, mm, uh, Canada, everywhere you went, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> noticing it now that more and more people are like, they just want to. You know, I think they took for granted that you could go out. And now they're like, oh, no, if we get a chance oh, to yeah. go out. Yeah. And I bet you uh, Greece is going to be... I went last year, mm. and Greece was jammed. It's going to be jammed this year. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. But I went, like, I had to go do a show in Santorini, and everybody's like, oh, wow. you got to go to Greece. I go, I'm going to go. I'm vaccinated. And I went high season. Mm. Los one Angeles. of the first countries to come out of Yeah, they opened up. They opened, Greeks were like, oh, we're going to open it up. Yeah. And but Europe. people were still worried. Mm. 
And the airfare from Los Angeles to Athens return peak season mm. was 691 bucks, which is normally 1700 bucks. Yeah. It's like a domestic so like, flight. Like six, yeah, it's, it's like, so I'm like, uh, I stayed in Paros. Still the best. I got uh, this one bedroom apartment with the family, 100 feet from the beach. Five nights. Beautiful. 500 mm. bucks. Mm. Five nights for 500. I thought it was 500 a night. Mm. And you go anywhere, and he goes, Nah, nah, he goes, oh, you're Greek, I've got a lot of dosis, I'm going to have a lot of dosis, I'm going to have So I go to the thing. <laughs> so funny, man, I got the Greek Greek yeah. language discount. So he goes, <laughs> Asaf told me to come So I went, I rented a car there, no problem. <clears throat> but it was interesting to me, what was interesting was that um, the Greeks, are, they want the business. And mm. I noticed they're willing to open up bottles, on the bottles with the Santorini. Yeah. And, but all my, everybody was calling me and going, hey, how is it there, man? I go, it's okay. You know, are you worried mm. about COVID? Or it's too late now. We're here. We had yeah. to wear a mask on the yeah. flight. Yeah. And I, I noticed that even here, like I flew on American coming over to Sydney. Mm. Yeah. And it's optional if you put your mask on. Okay. So I had it on. I took it off. And then I'm going back with Qantas uh, uh, next week out of Melbourne. Yeah. Mm. But everybody's asking me, like, you know, they're living vicariously. So was it okay to... I said, yeah. well, I'm wearing it. Mm. You know, and in Greece. But we went to the Taverna. Well, you're wearing it just below your nose. So you just below your nose. No, put it on, <laughs> no, goes, they, they do this to you on the airline. Put oh, do up, they? Right? Okay. So we, we go to this Taverna in, in Paros. And I go to the guy. He sees me, my wife and daughter. And he goes, you want to eat? Nafate. Yeah, and he, this is what he says. He goes, there, 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 they have COVID. Edo, no COVID. <laughs> okay, if they only COVID, see this, it means they're not going to COVID. I go, bravo, we're going to go there. And my wife goes, why are we eating here? Because Mr. Stelio said that there's no COVID here. But how does he know? He doesn't. <laughs> but he's confident enough. He's good at marketing. Selling point. See how Greeks are? They go, if you only call COVID, COVID, although they're not going to COVID at all. And take advantage. Somehow across the street, COVID didn't run across yeah. the street. Although then they have COVID. Although then they have COVID. Because they have COVID. Although then they have COVID. All the people have COVID. All the people have Okay, look. Evangelos Petros Tsaroukas, yes. son of Peter and Debbie. Yes. Is that legit? 100%. <laughs> yeah. Hundred percent. How much crap did you cop? A lot. Well, I mean, we can think about it. Our parents anglicized their names, yeah. But for some reason, they felt important that they kept our names, <laughs> like all oh, stupid Miltiadi, Grammatiki, all these weird Evangelos, yeah. Michali, Anastasia, yeah. and then they're Peter and Debbie. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> Make us all have those kind of names. Why do you think they did that? Like, why do why did Greek parents do that shit to their kids? I think you know you know what their biggest fear was uh, when they left the mm. old country. Their biggest fear is that we would not be Greek. Mm. Yeah, sure. That was their biggest fear. So I mean, if you think about it, they they wanted to make sure. Like to them, it was a sacrifice for them, so they could anglicize their names yeah. because they were from there. But the offspring, no, you're gonna be Evangelos, and I mean they make uh, Evangelos <laughs> Petros Tsaroukas because mm-hmm. you those name after to Papu and all the shit yeah, your dad. Course. And then when I did that uh, that joke, it was funny to me because I thought, how come we have all the weird names and they got the Anglo names? Yeah. <laughs> But they wanted to preserve that uh, yeah. culture because they're they they scared. That. That's true. Well, my dad changed his name. His dad's name legally here when uh, after he was born mm-hmm. was Theophilactos. So oh, he'd go yeah. to school here and it's Protector of God. Yeah. Mm. Lovely name. That's but, a great, man. that's a cool name, Theophilactos. But he changed it. He went See, I would have liked it if he did it. call himself Protector of God. <laughs> What's your name? Protector of God. God. Yeah. You want to want peace? Nobody would fuck with that. That's badass. <laughs> I know a guy in Montreal. What he got? Yeah. His name was um, uh, fucking Xenophon Kokoromitis. <laughs> so, <laughs> strange noise rooster nose. <laughs> so I, I mean, I mean, and then people go, "You make this shit up." I do not make it. Xenophon Kokoromitis. Yep. Strange noise, rooster <laughs> nose. Yeah. That's and he'd get mad at me. He'd go to them. He's like, no, I'm just saying that's what your name means. Yeah. Strange noise. This other guy, I had a guy come in once when I, uh, Kyrios Metos. Vomit. Mr. Vomit. 
<laughs> so somebody was puking up back in your background. But there's a lot of those, like yeah. Lico Vrisi. Yeah. You know, there's a ton. A lot of the names are named after nicknames and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I think, see, this is, this is, this is the fine line as a comic. So I, will, my, I look at stuff like that. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to say this. I'm going to, I'm going to do this on my show, but I just wrote it today. Okay. Because it happened. Exclusive. And, and this, is, this is exclusive on Uzzle Talk. <laughs> so <clears throat> what happened? I have my phone, right? Yeah. My friend said, what did you eat the other day? And this actually happened. And so I go, so I go well, I said, um, um, I, I started off with an avgulamono. And, and then I got like some spanakopita. And then, uh, and then I got uh, galactaburico. So, you know, on iPhone, you press it and you say it and, and uh, you verbalize it and it spells it for you. Yeah. This is what, what came out. So I said, I get avgulamono. I'm homo. Uh, Spanakopita, spank your pita. And then Galactaburico, Galactic Booty Call. Wow. That's what came out on the phone. I didn't write it. Classic. So when I said, when I said, Avgolemono, Spanakopita, and uh, Galactaburico, I'm homo. Uh, uh, one, no, one homo. Um, uh, fucking uh, spank your pita and um, for galactic, galactic booty, booty, booty call. Wow! So that shit rates itself, <laughs> right? Yeah, and that's yeah, and, and because silly. of why? Because I'm trying to say again, Greek names. Yeah. If you go to GPS in Greece, F could be PH. Mm-hmm. You or it's all screwed up. So we were we were on the GPS. Pia odos itelis. Philo F Ph. The Greeks have eight ways to spell "f" mm. in Greece, so it's like oh, fucking yeah. whatever, man. <laughs> Classic. Being a kid at the room, at the room. Yeah. <laughs> Classic. When did you when did you realize that you were funny? Like grow, growing up, was were you were you the class clown? That's the that, that seems to be the thing. It. You know what it was? I worked at my dad's restaurant, so customers okay. would come in. I thought a lot of them were morons, so I used to make joke around with them a bit, you know. And then at a young age, I used to listen to comedy albums. I'm talking eight, nine years old. Okay. Unusual for a kid. Mm-hmm. So I would listen to, um, you know, Jackie Mason. I would listen to Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, I would listen yeah. to Red Fox. I would listen to Red Buttons. I would listen to Bill Cosby, mm-hmm. you know, uh, 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 George Carlin uh, prior. George, George Carlin, well. Wow. Uh, Hadi Klin was a big influence <laughs> on me. Because I thought Hadi Klin was fucking hilarious, man. All those <laughs> UFO and the noises he made. Mm. I will say that, you know, it, it, I put him in the greats of those comedians. Yeah, wow. Because he was really that good. Wow. And, and I thought, wow, he's not only is he a comic, but he's Greek. Yeah. And, he, and, you know, he did all those characters and stuff that were, yeah. uh, <laughs> I thought it was just brilliant. And I would listen to him. My mom would go, Ade Kimisu. And I had the little, you know, the record player on, I put on low, and I'd listen. I'd go to sleep listening to uh, it's contraband. Up. It was contraband. Classic. I loved yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, I loved all that stuff. And then, we had, and then we get, remember we had cassettes. They came out, mm. and then, and then after that, and then it's weird. And then I started doing it in high school for a variety show. Mm, okay. I did it, and then it was then I got hooked. And the Greek shows by accident. It was twenty two years ago. It was two thousand. My friends, I was telling you, you're in a band called Poseidon. You said yes. you're in a band. Yeah. So they go to Calgary to do the Greek uh, festival. So we're in a hall of about five, 600 Greeks. Yeah. I, was, I just broke up with my uh, wife. I needed, I was uh, just okay. going to try to get away. Uh, I go to Calgary. You know, join the club. <clears throat> join the club. We get there, and Tony, the bazooki player, they blew a fuse. Mm. So they got to send somebody out to get a fuse. Now the mics are working. Yep. So they were like, uh, Ange, why don't you do something? No any good jokes? <laughs> I'm like, well, you know, I, I always did a couple of Greek jokes about yeah. my name, but ne- I never thought of, but I thought, it's a whole audience of Greek Canadians. Yeah. All right, so I go up, and off the top of my head, I start <clears throat> talking about the family and the theas and then this mm. and the that. 25, 30 minutes goes, standing O. I'm not kidding you. They went wow. berserk. Wow. And I thought, okay, I'm on to something here. This, they all, but then I realized they all grew up the same way I did. Yeah. You guys grew up the same way I did. Yeah. It doesn't matter. We all grew up the same way. Mm. So whatever I was saying to them, 
They didn't need to think about it. They've experienced that. Could relate to it. And then shortly after, I did uh, an album. That's the CD that people first heard in Australia called It's All Greek to Me. Mm -hmm. It was a CD. And that actually made top downloads in Australia, unbeknownst to me. Wow. So the people were here were getting it on the download okay. when they can start downloading it. And that was yep. the CD. And that was, I, I taped that one in Montreal about, with my, <clears throat> my mom and my dad and all that yep. stuff. And that's the one that the, the shot heard around the world. And, mm. they, and they heard it everywhere. And, I'll, and then, I don't know. And then I just, if I, I always like to look at the absurdities of yeah. life. Doesn't matter because I do whether it's mainstream or Greek, mm. and like I, like I just told you now with the names or you know. So this wasn't prepped. Yeah, no material. No, just no. ad libbing. I had lived it. I, I just went up there just and said, "What there. is it about Bosco? Why do we do this?" And it was ad lib because I thought it's like you're talking to yourself. I was like, I was like you know, yeah. is it just me or am I a yeah. fucking? And they, they, I kid you not, my Cubato looks because you got something here. Yeah. This is something. <laughs> and then the other guy got mad. The guy, Cristo, the singer. Yeah, yeah. Tito Malaca Bono. He goes, <laughs> Stole the show. Mr. Bono of fucking Greece. I go, Kanekatits <laughs> Prokopis. I love Chris. Yeah. But he goes, Malaca. He got mad because, you know, he, I went up and told jokes for 30 minutes, got a standing O. <laughs> and then when they got on, everybody's like, Ferena Suvlaki, Ken. Bring Angelo back bring, on. Bring him on. And the, and the Greeks were doing this to me. Ah, the Phoenix on Yeah. yeah. They, they loved <laughs> they it. They loved it. Wow. And the band's like, okay, you can fuck off now. We don't want you to stick yeah. around anymore. Yeah. No, they're kidding. They're my friends. I love those guys. <laughs> they're they're, they're but great. It, it is about the absurdities, isn't it? <laughs> it um, is. The, th the thing that I loved, oh, I piss myself laughing every time I hear that bit about the weddings, the Thea at the wedding. It's the That's my idea. Yeah, yeah. We're and you know we're standing at you know you stand in front of the banquet hall. They don't open the doors. Yeah. yeah. Because Anastasia and Adoni haven't showed up yet. Yeah. Because they went to the fucking Seychelles to take their pictures. <laughs> and then you're sitting there, and, and then you see them. And, you know, and you know Greeks give them a thing to complain about. They're going to complain. Yeah. And there's my Thea with. Uh, and they're just like fucking I go and I think when I'm doing that character it, I'm sounding like her I think everybody knows who she is yes everyone has an auntie yes that. that sounds like that and yeah. I think that's why when I do my mom or stuff, yeah. uh, 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 the impressions of her, like the way my mom does it, uh, putan, yes, de banana, de putana. Yeah. <laughs> so my mom, I'm trying to get her to come down to uh, LA and she's like, you know, she wants me to feel bad, right? Yeah. I go, I, uh, and then what I do is I get my daughter in the phone. I go, oh, that's good. Go, go talk to yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, make her cry. Yeah. Okay, she goes, hi, yeah, yeah. Thank you for the kuluria. I love you, yeah, yeah. When are you gonna come and visit me and play with me and show me how to make kuluria? My mom, yeah, crying <laughs> on the phone. And I'm sitting there with a big smile on my face. Keep, and going, going, keep going. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then she says to my daughter, put your father back on the phone. And I, that's why I went back on the phone. My mom, putan yes, de pernane, but putana. She knew exactly what I did. And I said, okay. hey, now you know what it feels like. And you know where I learned that from, mom? You, yeah, the guilt. And, me, and <laughs> yeah. I put Livy on the phone, and my and my daughter just works at Ella. Yeah, yeah, come and show me, how to, come and show me how to make kuluria. You know, for a Greek that grandmother, genius. that's kryptonite, yeah. right? She's like, oh, nappy dimu. And I go, yeah, and then I got, and then my, and my, and then I got my sister, the spokes, secretary of state, the spokesperson. <laughs> she gets on the phone. You're a fucking asshole. Mom's yeah. feeling bad. Oh well. Yeah, and she was whatever, man. She you, everything. So I said, "Hey, it wasn't me. It was your niece. Yeah, she wants you to show her to make kuluria." Yeah, I didn't say shit to her. She did it on her own. Yeah, and then it's like everybody, and then and then all the gossip starts. Yeah, we start talking about the other family. You know, our other cousin. I think she's a dyke. You know that, right? Oh, I knew that. Well, you knew that. Why wouldn't you tell me? I yeah. go, well, it's been going on for years. Yeah, and so and so, he's, and your brother's an asshole, and then he just. And then yeah. you call the other ones, yeah. and they start telling you they're Kotsoboya. Yeah. You know, your sister is a stupid. Everybody has yeah. got something to say. Yeah. So if you want to find out what's going on, just one by one, yeah. call the family members. They'll rat each yeah. other out. Yeah. Every one of them is going to say something about somebody else. Everybody's got 
So Skeletons in the closet. So it does it. It just writes itself. It writes itself. Yeah. My job is to kind of separate it and, and facilitate it. You know, facilitate the whole Categorize thing. Categorize it all. Right. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, if, you see, right now we're, we're chuckling because we've all had to do that. Yeah. And I told my mom, I said, don't get, don't get mad at me. I said, yeah. she wants yeah, yeah mm. to show her to make Kuluria. Yeah. But I guess yeah, is in Montreal, right? Because you got yeah. the dog and your fucking doctor. I go, don't worry about it. You know, ask the the, and, the girl. She goes, that's not you're not you're not you're not being fair. <laughs> no, I'm not. And this is the what same woman classy. who's guilting you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at the <laughs> airport. At the airport. <laughs> I'm the face of the I put up a tiso. I put up a tisis. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm in yeah. traffic. <laughs> but you see, even those words. It's our moms. We love our moms. Yeah, yeah. We do. They're, you know, really, dads, if you had to pick one parent to be a dick, it's dad. Yeah. But moms are always, we, that's why we love and respect our moms so much. Psychological. I make fun of with my mom, but I always have a high respect yeah. because we were raised like that. You know, it's funny. I did a show with another Greek comic and uh, it was in, uh, I think it was in New York and he went up. And I, he, I put him on the show to open for me and in front of an all Greek audience, called his mom a bitch. Mm. And the audience shut down. Mm. So I, I pulled him aside. His name's Dino. I said, Dino, come here. I got to talk to you. He goes, well, I said, look. Well, I go, you called your mom a bitch. Well, she is. is rule number one, Greek mm. audience. Mom is a fucking saint. Mm. You don't call mom a bitch ever. Even yeah. you don't do that. You don't with a. Did you know? See what happened? He goes, yeah. They shut down. Yeah. They. That's not mm. Greek audience. You can see. Yeah, my dad's a bit of a dick. Eh, okay. Yeah. We'll accept it. Yeah. Mom. No way. You see how everybody shut down? He goes, yeah. What was that about? I go, you called your mom a bitch. Mm. Even if she is, you don't say it. Because it, it, for us, it's a no-no. And it's funny culturally, because people say to me, as a comic, can you say anything? You can, mm. but there's consequences. And that's mm. one of them. Mm. And I, go, I said to them, I said, my, I'll say our mothers are complicated, mm. but I never put them down. Yeah. Because they've done so much for us. Definitely. So I think most people come from that point of view of, well, we, my mom with the guilt. Because they do that, right? <laughs> Meryl Streep, that's okay. Because my mom, my mom laughs at that. Mm. But as soon as you call your mom a bitch, yeah. it's done. you've no. lost the audience. He lost the, the audience. Line. You've crossed the line. They crossed the line and they did not want to, they did not want to listen to him. And I go, yeah. oh, I hope you learned something today. Mm. He goes, yeah, I realized that. I said, no, yeah. you see, that's, that's where point. you were wrong. Even we just said it now, it is, whoa. Whoa, yeah. 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 But, but we're using it in context of a yeah. conversation. Yeah, and I know what you mean. Right, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But even and just you saying it in the context. Yeah, in the context. Far, you know, oh, you don't, shit. It doesn't go together. And I even told him, I said, dude, you yeah. don't do that stuff. So yeah. comedy's comedy. We, yeah. we touch everything, bases, mm. this and that. Some things, though, you know, yeah, yeah, mm. mom, yeah, yeah, no. There are some sacred. Yeah, yeah. there you are. You, you, you know, you can't. I, I make fun of my grandmother, too, because yeah. my grandmother okay. was funny. Yeah. But, you know, things that we identify with. Yeah. Not character assassinations. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I would never do it. And I, and I think he learned something. And he goes, you know, I thank you for doing that because I think I learned mm. something today. Mm. Yeah. Because I'm for freedom of speech. Mm. But there's consequences. Yeah. Mm. And it doesn't matter what you do. Every culture is going to draw a line for you. Yeah. You don't have to. You can say it. Yeah. But you put Great up the point. consequences. Yeah. Good How point. tough is it to be a comedian in such a politically correct world? It's tough. Sure it is. Um, look, we just, we had, like, we use, I use something in a context of a dialogue. Mm. And we were self-conscious of it, right? Because... You can always tell if somebody is mean-spirited about something. Mm. So there's words you can't use. I always say this. I go, Greeks aren't racist. We're Greek. Meaning the way you speak the Greek language, it, my friend, it sounds like, o psilos, o kodos, o chodros, o mm. kinesos, o mavros. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's in reference how we speak as Greeks. So my mm. friend says, well, it's, you sound racist when you say that. I go, hold yeah. on. I said, in Greek, that's what it is. So when you see the guy, uh, you know, Omavros. Mavro yeah. in Greek is black. Yeah. Mm. Kinezo in Greek is Chinese. Psilos, kodos, kodros, whatever. Yeah. I said, it's a direct dialect of how we speak this language. Yeah. Now, you're translating it 
it sounds like that you can do that with any language mm. and make it sound like it's going to be uh, racist. So mm. I always say the for and, and the Greek audience understands this. Mm. I say we're not racist; we're Greek. Mm. You know, I mean, it's just and I said, look, I, I'm not going to apologize for it. Mm. For sorry, I'm apologizing for mathematics. I'm going to apologize for the alphabet. <laughs> I'm going to apologize for the Olympics. I'm going to apologize. If it wasn't for us, you guys would be wiping your golo with rocks. Mm. You know, and the funny thing is, I love that line in Big Fat Greek Wedding when he goes, I know. Uh, when he goes, Chishro Sanesti, and he goes, Otenemis Grafame Philosophias, Esis Cremosas Temoda Vedra. That is so freaking true. It is, it's very Greek, isn't it? It's so Greek because <laughs> now, it, yeah, do we, I, I think sometimes, uh, do we go over the line? Mm -hmm. But it's just that that's the way we are, though. I don't think. And even now, as uh, as Greeks, um, <clears throat> I think you can see the difference now because now we're getting. I've noticed now there's been a lot of alternative lifestyle being incorporated in entertainment. Mm. So now <clears throat> you have a lot of people in the LGBTQ community now yep. coming out and doing this stuff. Mm. Accept it, you know. And like when people say, "Do you have a problem with it?" I live in Hollywood. <laughs> I'm an actor. I'm a comic. I've been around my yeah. whole life. That doesn't bother me. And yep. we talked about it earlier with, yeah. with where my dad and mom are from. So yep. it's close to the topic and to the matter. Mm. So when, when people say to you, well, wh what is it? I go, well, you got to look at the origin of what we're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. You're, you're, if I'm saying it for effect, mm. then okay, yeah, maybe it's mean spirited. But mm. no, I'm like, uh, like, the guy comes up to me and he goes, you know, I'm uh, uh, LGBTQ, uh, okay. Nice. And, and I'm... I'm Greek. Yeah, it's like a, it's like those guys. What do you call those guys? The um, uh, the Colobarades, yeah. <laughs> or the other guys there. Uh, if you're in Hollywood Boulevard, you get the Scientologists. Yeah, yeah, right. And the guy goes to me. I'm walking down Hollywood Boulevard, and the guy yeah. goes, "You want me to read your palm?" I go, "You want me to read your coffee?" Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, "What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Go, what are you talking about?" Yeah. And he goes, "Well, we we read palms." I go, "That's that's amateur hour." Yeah. Like we're Greeks. Yeah. Yeah. We do mati, we got coffee cups, we got yeah. all kinds of shit. And the guy's looking at me, are you making this up? I go, do I sound like I'm making it up? That's and then so he, cool. and it's so funny, my friend laughs, she's an actress, she was with me. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, I can't believe what you were saying, but you were truthfully saying what you were saying. I go, yeah. because a lot of people don't root their culture. Yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know where their families are from. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, I'll send you guys, I did a documentary called Back to Sparta. Mm. Where I go back to Greece, and now they're gonna they're gonna show it at the Montreal uh, film Greek Film Festival, but it's about going back to Greece to do a show. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing I did. Yeah, and Fantastic. I went to my dad's village, and there's, it's, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry, all that stuff. Definitely, you wanna see so, that? I'll send Definitely. you the links. Look at them. <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, is that when it comes down to the end of it, when you're talking about all that kind of stuff, I said. You can tell, I think, by the tone of somebody's body language or how they talk to you, mm. whether they're, they're fearing it or something. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't think we fear anything. Yeah. Mm. I'm okay. The guy goes to me, you know, the guy goes to me I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm a man, but I identify as a woman. Yep. Mm. I go, I'm fat, but I identify as skinny. Mm. <laughs> Does that make me translender? Or like, what? I don't know. What? <laughs> so what is it? Yeah. You know, like, I mean, think about it. <laughs> Like, I, I'm quick to tell you, uh, I do this, okay, and I do this. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, the thing is, did I, did I, did I categorize you? Yeah. No. Did I even ask you a question? No, it's not mm -hmm. my business. Yeah. And, you know, you work on it sometimes, and the guys will come up, and it's like, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> he goes, because yeah. some people get scared, and I say, that's why I'm very careful, even in the act. It's a great question. It's a good mm -hmm. question, because... Mm -hmm. It can go on. Every comic's going to tell you something different. Yeah. yeah. And the for context me, is so important, as you, you it know, is. as you said. That situation that Rogan had recently, where the, you know somebody went and cut all these all, all this audio together. Yeah, with the N word. The I'm, yeah. yeah. You know, like you know, as if they're not. Yeah, going but what's after your view him. on that? What's your view on Joe Rogan? Tell us about Joe Rogan. Look, Joe Rogan's the Messiah now. <laughs> he is. Yeah, Joe. Look, Joe Rogan. Look. He built, he's a very smart guy. I met him a couple of times. I'm yeah, not going to sit here and pretend we're best friends. We're not. I met him. Yeah. You know, 
He uh, he's a successful stand-up comic. He had mm-hmm. television, Fear Factor. Then he got involved in this thing called UFC. Yep. Yes. And he starts doing all that stuff. And all along was doing this, a podcast. Mm-hmm. And everybody thought, ah, fuck, what the fuck's Joe doing? He started this like 13 years ago. Yeah. yeah. I remember it. And, you know, he kept doing it at the Ice House in Pasadena. Yeah. And then he would do all these places. Now look, Spotify picks him up for $100 million. Mm. He moves to Austin, Texas. And now yeah. everybody's gone to Texas. Yeah. yeah. And I was there too. So... Uh, I think some people look. Anybody gets to a certain level, yeah, they're going to try to knock you down. Look at Elon Musk bought mm. Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Now he's the Antichrist because mm. they don't agree with it. I think anytime uh, I do stuff that people don't like, mm. I'm sure mm. you can even have listeners. That's okay. Mm. I say you're allowed to not like my yeah. stuff. Yep. I don't need everybody to like what I say 100%. or what we're saying. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I, I, if most of the people like it, we're good because mm. I think some people want ultimate acceptance from everybody you're never going to get it yeah mm. look in greece i got some people from greece mm. i put that clip up about my name tsaruchas mm. funny yeah. greek shoes yep how dare you make fun of the greek culture how mm. dare you insult the heritage of hey it's my fucking name where mm. did i insult i had to live with the name tsarucha funny mm. greek shoes of pom-poms mm. you don't know the origin of your name so you you're gonna tell me i don't know that what my name means and yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, the reason I'm making fun of it, it brings people to light to understand that mm. I'm proud of my name. Yeah, sure. I never it's said different. I hated it. I say, oh, this is what it means. Because everybody shoe. asks you. They yeah. ask you, what's your ma- name mean? Mm. Well, it's a shoe with a pom-pom. Mm. <laughs> no, seriously. No, seriously. Yeah. That's what it is. Classic. Yeah. yeah. So they, I think people get offended by being offended. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, okay, and, 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 and I've said this before, I go, I respect everybody. I wouldn't, if it's low-hanging fruit, I don't go there. Yeah. Some jokes are too easy yep. yeah. to make fun of people with disabilities and this and that, whatever. Yeah. You know, um, no, that's, that's, it, it depends on who you are. If you're a sadistic person, sure. then you'll do it. Mm. Uh, other people, we're more observational. Yeah. Greeks are more observational. We love Parea. Mm. We love Kotsobolio. Mm. We love what we're doing right now. We love That's to talk it. and we love Greeks love to talk and hang out. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're doing. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. We love exactly. that. We we, we die for that stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Look, speaking of controversy, yeah. can we talk about the the Sfaliata, The Will Smith, Chris Rock. Oh. What, what's your view on that? Okay, I, I actually came out and did a video. Yeah on my page because everyone's got it. an opinion on this okay here's yeah. my opinion <laughs> number one chris rock is a comic yep and uh he did a joke mm-hmm. uh very very low hey jada looking forward to seeing you in gi jane too yeah you know he gave her kind of a, po- a compliment because yep. Do you think demi moore i don't think he knew she had alopecia okay. there's no way i was watching the show well what do you think it's a setup <laughs> now why would it be a setup Think about it. It's the Oscars. More he just got he well he Oscars just got banned on the, on the download. They're on it. I mean, you got the number one comic in the world with the number one actor at mm. the number one award show. Why mm-hmm. would you fuck it up? Mm-hmm. And I've heard this that people think it's a it's a setup. Okay, it would be a setup if one of them wasn't famous. Mm. Then mm. you know, and I was oh, Angel Tsuruka has whacked Will Smith in the head. Point. They're already famous. Now, yeah, they're famous, so yeah. they don't need attention. Yeah. Okay. You know, so and what's I, your view? So it's it so, real. Definitely. My happy. real view is, yeah. <clears throat> I think Will Smith is a malaka mm. because, and I'll tell you why, mm. because when he did the joke, he said, just fooling Jada. Mm. Then he decides, his wife came out, basically said, I'm in an entanglement, <laughs> so I'm banging my son's friends. Mm. But they, in Hollywood, they call it an entanglement. Okay. Well, you know, when you're, when you're depressed in Hollywood, yeah. okay, uh, it's called... Um, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. When you're depressed and you're poor, it's called depression. Mm. Mm. So, they, so uh, you know, we had an entanglement. You basically cuckold your husband to the world, mm-hmm. you know, because you weren't happy. Mm. Okay. Then he gets to the Oscars. Mm-hmm. They put all their garbage up for the world to see. Yep. So everybody knows this. Mm. She shaved her head. Now, if you don't want the attention mm. on the biggest night of your husband's career, put a wig on, Jada. You're in Hollywood. Mm. Mm. But no, I'm going to shave my head. And I'm not saying alopecia isn't something serious. It is. Mm. And it's very sensitive to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. 
But you're sitting on the on the thrones of uh, the Oscars, mm. right in the front row, the king and queen. Mm. One comedian, the court jester, made a joke, and all uh, you gave him the look like. And he didn't know. You reckon he didn't know? I I could tell you he didn't know. He didn't know. And I, even I if he did, he even if he did know, was it that bad a joke, dude? No, it wasn't. But and now some people will disagree with me. Yeah, he stood up for his wife. Okay. I'm all about standing up for your wife, mm. not in front of hundreds of millions of people. Mm. Yeah. And you're, you know, this guy, he didn't call her putana or mm. not. He could have done a lot worse to her. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, of course. cause he said when Will Smith, you want me to tell you the truth? And this yeah. is only comics mind. Yeah. When Will Smith came out and said, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> and then I said, I would have turned around and said, I will until August. Because August was the guy she was banging, right? Oh, so wow. that, a comic, Chris Rock had, I guarantee you, 10, Keeps 12 comebacks. Oh, yeah. And he didn't go there. Yeah. Every comedian saw it. And I yeah. knew it. Yeah. He could have said so many things to her. Yeah. And he didn't. Yeah. Massive because restraint. Of, Matt, yeah. He, he did. Okay. So people say to me, well, what was that? I go, Will Smith. I go, Remalaka. Yeah. Out of all the times you're going to decide to stand up for somebody yeah you pick this moment where yep. you know you're gonna get the oscar yeah why mm. and because comedians have been a lot worse in oscars oh uh, ricky yeah. gervais tore them apart at I the know. golden globes and it was outstanding tore them apart Who it was, was it? brilliant tom hanks yeah tom yeah. hanks with his mutra whatever yeah. go, go, tom go with your 500 million dollars don't worry about it yeah see it, we're comics yeah you can't take what we're saying i like what what did ricky gervais say Come up here, get take your, your award. award, get your awards, thank whatever God it is you uh, pray to, and fuck off. Yeah. Because he said, we don't want to hear your bullshit. Yeah. And he's, I became a huge Ricky Gervais fan oh, yeah. after those Golden Globes because he gave it to them. Yeah. And all these people, and he goes, he goes, isn't it great? He goes, a whole bunch of people in Hollywood. But it's funny you some people think that. No one would yeah. say it, but he said it. He that. said it. Yeah. But that's a comic. Mm. So with Will Smith, you know, mm. when that whole thing went off with Jada Pinkett, mm. I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm, you assaulted a comic. Mm. This is where I jump in. Mm. Yeah. I support Will Smith. Uh, I support Chris Rock. Chris Rock yeah. Because now, if they let this go, guys, what, I'm going to be on stage. Some guy decides I offended him. Open slather. I love feta cheese. I hate feta cheese. Bomb. It hits me in the head. That was going to be my next question. What precedent does that set that's are we ever going to see another comedian host the oscars because know. of this because i know i know i'm friends with wanda sykes i know wanda. oh really yeah i see her i love with, wanda she's great <laughs> her and her wife come a lot to great greek on ventura okay. boulevard and i was on last comic very nice lady she's really funny i love you wanda and, and wanda's great and it's funny because <clears throat> they they were hosting it with amy schumer and the other and the girls did a great job they did a great job because jada her career's in the toilet. Yeah. And all of a sudden, she's like, you know, and I'm going to ruin the night. And let's face it. what is, She got what she wanted. Mm. She wanted to ruin the night, and she did. And Will Smith, if Will stood up and said, hey, Chris, easy on my wife. She's got a condition. And he yelled it out. It would be weird, but okay, whatever. But a night. He yeah. would have. If I get up on stage like, now, if I get up from this podcast, come over and slap you right now with the cameras on. Mm. Is that right? No, no, no it's all. not. No. It's the same thing. It, so it doesn't matter. It's the Oscars. Anywhere you go, I mm. wouldn't do that. To, there's, there's, there's a space. There's a trust that we have. As a comic, mm. I'm telling jokes. Like we said earlier, you don't like what I'm doing? Fine. You don't yeah. have to like. But there's even a the thing with comedians. If you go to a comic show, if you're going to sit in the front row, you know you're going to get They're going to probably talk to you. I went to, one, I went to the comedy store probably about two weeks ago. There was no one sitting in the front row. Yeah. Did you go there? You. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all right. Yeah, but that's fine. I, we went. We, oh, we sat second row. We mostly might have been in the front row, but they were fine. They, didn't heck, they heckled a few people, but you got to expect it. Yeah. And no matter what they say, you just got to take it. That's part of the show. And you just got to laugh with it. It's but, so true because think about it. Um, Look, the shows I do with Greek audience is different because I'm talking with the audience. Mm. I don't really single out anybody, you yeah. know, because it's not that kind of show. You know, yeah. it's not. And, and I find, you know, it, it, can, it can go wrong for many reasons. You know, yeah. you don't want to, you know. But Russell Peter does it. Oh, Russell does it because yeah. Russell's But Russell. it's funny. Russell's a master at it. Yeah. 
you know, brown guy, blue guy, but Russell's a master at doing it. <laughs> but think about it. Would Russell be able to, Russell or Don Rickles, would he be able to come and do that routine starting out today? Probably not. Yeah. He's been, Russell's been doing it for 30 years. Yeah, yeah. He's so a master at what he does. So will comedy change now, do you think, because of this incident for It's you? changed. It has changed. It has changed. Mm. So I see now, because we've become so fucking sensitive, that people are offended by the littlest of things. Mm. So, you know, I'm even careful if I say something, especially around women or anybody. Mm-hmm. I say, I didn't mean it. Like, like I was at backstage last night and I came off the stage and I go, how was that? How was that, honey? And I go, and I said, didn't mean to call you honey. <laughs> she goes, it's okay. I go, I, I'm still excited. I'm a bit old school. <laughs> I should have said, uh, how was that opposite person, sex, something? You know, it's so weird. Honey's so you got to do like a disclaimer now before you put almost. it on the show. I mean, almost. Put a little like, asterisk. What if, what, what if what happened at the Oscars, say, happened at the improv on a Saturday night? You reckon it would have gotten it's, as much? It could have it it uh, turned into a fight. Yeah. Depends who it is. See, Chris Rock was smart, guys, because he knew hundreds of millions of people were watching the Oscars. Mm-hmm. By him not retaliating, showed restraint. Oh, saint-like. I mean, you know, I mean, and Will Smith, there, it was taller than him, whatever. Mm. You know, imagine if that was a Greek festival by Nihiri, and you go and slap the guy behind the... Oh, you to be on. The oh, yeah. Fasto Bastuni in the side of the head in seconds. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's going to be like, what? <laughs> yeah. That's it. I don't agree yeah. with the Greeks. It's on, man. You hit yeah. one of them, that's it. You're fucking done. <laughs> So what do you think's uh, happened there? Do you think Chris Rock is he's going to sue? He's going to sue. You reckon? Well, Jim Carrey he's said right, that no, he should. No. He's going to sue, guys. Yeah. He's very. He's got advisors. Yeah. He's gone to the number one law firm in America, New York. Mm. Watch. I bet you, you know in a month or a two. Yes. And who's okay. he? I know sue? for a fact. Oscars or no? He's, he's going to sue both of them. Wow. And what's going to happen? The magic number. I'm going to tell you now is two hundred million. Okay. That's what. That's what Jim said. They're Jim going to Perry. settle. They're going to go for two hundred million dollars. Yeah. And this is what's going to happen. Chris is going to get one hundred and fifty million. The high end Jewish lawyers in New York get twenty five, mm-hmm. and the high end Jewish lawyers in L A get twenty five. Okay. Because it's going to be Steinberg, Lehman, and whatever. These are the guys. They yeah. are clever, smart people. Yeah. They're going to put the fucking deal together. Wow. You and good for first. them. And I'm telling you, it's going to be two, yeah. the number is going to be $200 million. Yeah. Will's worth about $450. Mm. They're going to liquidate him because what he did was wrong. Yeah. It was assault. And yeah. they let it go. Yeah. Now, and he hasn't been charged, has he? No, I see. It's yeah. it. Black Lives Matter, this, that, everything else. Everybody's mm. scared to make a move. It doesn't matter, guys. A man assaulted another man on live TV. Mm. does not matter of their color or their religion. Mm. A guy assaulted another guy. It was an assault. Mm. If you let it go, you're setting an example to exactly. everybody that you yeah. can go hit somebody yeah. and it's okay. Mm. Especially if they're on stage. It's- on stage. Yeah. So, no, I, I, you can't play any type of race card or anything here. Yeah. yeah. You know, because they can't. Mm. A man assaulted another man. Mm. And even, you know, the LAPD was backstage. You know, they can put the charges themselves. Yeah, they were ready to go. And they were ready to go. And they but said, no do you want us to do it? Did they? He didn't want to do it because it's going to set back everything they fought for for the last 20 years. Mm. So. But now that and, dust and, is settled. And if somebody does that to you in the Oscars, mm. you're shocked. Mm. You don't have no, no, tell me, so if, I, if you come up and hit me, I'm like, well, did you just hit me? Like, mm. at the Oscars? Joke? What's going on? He's acting? Was Cause remember when he was walking up, Chris Rock was laughing. Ah, oh, here he comes. You know, he thought he thought maybe he should put his arm around them. Come on, man. You know, mm. God, shot in the head yeah, right, yeah, right there. Sfagliata. Yeah. One Sfagliata. Mm. The Sfagliata that changed the world. Mate. That changed the world. Yeah. That changed comedy. Yeah. 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 I, I, I've been in a club once where the guy in Canada... Uh, so I was hosting the show mm. and the guy, this guy in the front row is yep. regular looking guy with a really smoking hot woman. Mm. So the comic before me goes on and he says to the guy, he goes, you know, after the show, I can go upstairs, jerk off thinking about your wife and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> and he goes, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to do that right after I leave the stage. So these are all your words. The guy takes a drink and chucks the drink. He chucks a drink. The guy spits on him, he spits back. 
scrum. Wow. You know, yeah. like rugby, the scrum, yeah, yeah, yeah. right at the stage. Yeah. So we jump on the stage, and of course, the girl's sitting there, like, yo, he's going to jerk off to me. <laughs> and then I had to go, so I go, we broke it up. They threw him out. Mm. I went back on stage, and I go, how many other women are upset that they didn't pick you? <laughs> you know, well, this or that. Because they make a, I had to make a joke about it. But words, mm. he, it was just words. Yeah. But it was enough. His ego was fragile enough mm. where she's like, whatever, you know. And then mm. he's like, you know, you said that, you threw the drink. But then the assault, when the cops came, said, was it the drink? It was the spit. Okay. Yeah, right. you, in Canada, if you spit on somebody, it's assault. Wow. Is that right? Okay. Yes, it's a song. Wow. Yeah. Okay, speaking of heckling, have you ever yeah. been heckled on stage? Yeah, I've been heckled. Have Man. you managed? Not as much lately, but... Tell us a story. <laughs> Who does it best? <laughs> okay, so I was I was doing uh, I was doing a club in London, England. I was living at the Comedy Store in Piccadilly mm-hmm. Circus. One of the oh, best yeah. clubs in the Beautiful. world. Yeah, yeah I think club. I've been there. Yeah. Beautiful club. I'm in the front row, and this guy's sitting there, and he goes... Go home, you fat bastard. Go back to America with your cheeseburgers and your guns. <laughs> I thought, is that a heckle or a political statement? What <laughs> cheeseburgers and guns? Yeah. And I said to the guy, I said to him, uh, look, man, uh, I'm from, not that anything wrong with America because I love America, but I'm from Canada. And then he goes to me, fuck Canada. He goes, what did Canada ever do? What did Canada or America ever do for England? And I said, well, I'm not a history buff. Yeah. But I said, um, if it wasn't for Canada and America, and you could see Australia, you'd be heckling me in German, Malacca. Because it came <laughs> over. And, and, oh, and let me answer your other question. The reason I'm fat is every time I banged your mom, she baked a pie. <laughs> You fish and chip eating motherfuckers of Pasto Diallo. And then I said, mind the gap between your teeth. Classic. And he goes, well, what does America have that England doesn't have? I said, dentists. That's Classic. what we have in America. Wow. So I gave it to him. So yeah. it was one of those things. I think there's, there's a one rule. I think we've talked about it. You never heckle someone with a mic. With the mic. Yeah. You oh, just yeah. let it go. No, and I, I gave uh, it to him. Yeah, it, and the crowd was laughing. They didn't laugh. Yeah. So whatever the stuff was going on there, but it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, not often you can get a guy. Sometimes they're really drunk. Yeah. yeah. So they'll say they'll say shit. You know. Yeah. You know, it's rare at a Greek show, like yeah. a Greek. But they get the other guy. You know, there's one comic I knew, Lawrence Morgenstern. God rest his soul. He passed mm-hmm. away. Uh, a funny comic from Toronto. Some guy kept heckling him. <laughs> and it wouldn't stop. And he goes, you know, he goes. <laughs> If cocks had wings, your mouth would be an airport. <laughs> <laughs> and I fucking laughed. The, the brilliance of it, you know? And because the guy kept heckling him. Yeah. And he goes, I let him go, I let him go, I had to get him back, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, yeah, so, so many, there's so classics like yeah, that. Yeah, it's yeah. not as much now. Well, look, we're getting close to the end here, but yes. let's, let's, quickly, let's quickly talk about your brother from another mother. The great Russell Peters. Russell Peters is one of the funniest guys I've ever met in my fucking life. He really, that that guy, you know, I met him uh, in Ottawa. Mm. I I was a host of the show and he was a split middle. Imagine Mm. Greek kid and Indian kid meeting in Ottawa, 1993, 94, Mm. you know, and uh, he came from Toronto as an Ottawa he told me he worked at a Greek restaurant. He knew Greeks. He knew Malakas. You know, mm. he's one of those guys you became instant, you instant friends with. You yeah. Know? And I've been instant friends with the guy forever. And you know, I I saw uh, we were coming up together, and I saw that his audience, you know, his huge audience, Indian audience, one point four billion. Yeah. Wow. Starting to sell out the shows, and then I saw what was going on. And I said, Russell, you're 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 going to grow out of these comedy clubs soon. You're going to go to theaters, and then from theaters, you can go to arenas, which you know, successfully he's done everywhere in the world, big time in Australia. Yep. Mm. And um, <clears throat> first time I came to Australia, he brought me with him. You know, he was mm, okay. a Greek audience. I got my foot in the door with him and then slowly started the, with the CDs and then mm. was able to build up. <clears throat> and I still do shows with him because the thing with him is that uh, I just did a tour with him. We did... Uh, uh, we did Texas and we did like North Carolina, South Carolina. And the thing with him though, is it's, it, 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 touring is grueling, mm. but it's funny. He's yeah. funny. <laughs> like he'll, you know, he, he'll, he'll say things like, you know, 
And now he knows all the Greek words. And if yeah. you see something, kita podia, kita. kita <laughs> like, he says all the freaking words. He knows. He says it in Greek now. Yeah. yeah. So the code now on the road is to speak in Greek. Greek. Wow. And Russell, and he goes, "Yo, man, what are you talking about? Hey, man, you don't understand. You don't understand Greek." He goes, yeah. Russell knows more yeah. than people think because <laughs> I talked to him in Greek, right? So yeah. he gets yeah. it. Yeah. And I mean, he's just been a phenomenon, you know. I did. Mm. He had a TV series called uh, Indian Detective. I, I was in it with him. Yep. I've toured literally around the world with the guy. Our kids play together. Wow. You know, he lives, uh, I live 10 minutes from him in LA. We get together. So, yeah. and you know, we get, uh, he messaged me the other day. Um, I think he's in New York. Mm. And then he's going to be going um, to do some shows somewhere else. And he asked me, "How's Australia going?" I think he's coming here this year. He's going to come oh, here awesome. this year. Okay. He's going. He's going right, next week. He's going to England, mm. and then he's going to go to. He wanted me to go with him to. He wanted me to go with him to Dubai and Qatar, but I said I have my my tour in Australia. He goes, "Oh yeah, you got your tour. I got my tour. Look at you now. Your tour, my tour." He's like, he makes fun. But he really is. He's got a huge cut of the eye. Yeah. Huge, yeah, mm. and uh, you know, we just laugh, man. He just yeah. the like he is, we do, <laughs> and it's and a lot of it is you know, as on the road, yeah. So, I'll tell you a funny story with him because Russell, all of Russell's, uh, most of the security guys are huge black, uh, American or Canadian guys, yeah, good guys, yep. big guys, though, like fucking big, yeah. fucking mountains, <laughs> just big men, yeah, and um. We were in Chicago at the, uh, you know, Chicago is like Sydney or Melbourne, a lot of Greeks. Yeah. So we're at this pancake place. So the guys are sitting there, you know, and as the two security guys, Russell, me, and another person. So the three Greek women, there were Greek women. Now they see big black guys in Chicago. Mm. So you hear them talking to each other. Yeah. And uh, uh, now Russell's right there. Now Russell, I couldn't hear it as much. So the one was saying, Prosexita Laftasu. Because they're putting the money down for the bill. This is in Greek. Yeah, yeah. In Greek. Yeah. And they're right there. So Russell caught on their Greek, right? And, and she pointed to the money. He figured it out. Uh, and then, uh, now you got an Indian guy with black guys. And I'm sitting in the far, I'm the furthest away. Mm. I couldn't hear everybody. So when they go, and then Russell goes, and <laughs> And they just froze. <laughs> they froze. And they were like, oh, oh shit, they just took off. You know, because ex- the yeah. exeftila, the embarrassment. Yeah. And they're like, well, why is this guy talking Greek? But he said it broken up Greek, yeah. right? Yeah. Because yeah. he knows he knows he knows Greek. He doesn't know all the Classic. but he knows enough, you know. Topiruni, like I mean shit like that. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> for our English <laughs> listeners, that means is that your money? Yeah, yeah. is that your yeah. money? Yeah. Yeah. Is that your money? Yeah. yeah. Boom! <laughs> They went out the door because they thought now he's heard. I don't think he understood everything they said, but he, yeah. just when you say a few words in Greek, oh shit, we got busted. He got yeah. enough. And they took off. Yeah. Wow. And we were laughing, man. And we were like, I mean, dude, this guy's loaded. He's not going to take your money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> guy's a multimillionaire. It didn't matter. They go, oh, it's not the left. That's unbelievable. And, he, and an Indian breaks out in Greek. But the funny thing is, like, in all of it, like, he's done a couple of Greek bits. But, yeah. but Greek isn't the main thing that he, you know, that, no. he, that he sort of plays with. And yet, here he is speaking fucking Greek. <laughs> he's brilliant. He's got, I think he's got some kind of fucking, I mean, you give him any language, he knows something. He looks at people, he can tell Korean, yeah. Vietnamese, mm. uh, Chinese. Uh, he can tell by the fatza, like he yeah. knows. He's so good at picking He's up so on these things. He's so good at picking up the little things. Yeah. Yeah. Greek, Italian, Croatian, South African, Jamaican, Trini. He's a master of that. Yeah. And the accents. He pulls off he does the, all accents. the accents. Like, you don't go there no more, he Batman. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he does all this shit. And they love the Kinesi, love it. Yeah. 50 cent, a lot 50 of money. 50 cent, a lot of my 50 cent. Here, yeah. 50 cent there, you get one dollar, go to dollar store, yeah. you get gift. One dollar. One dollar. One dollar. <laughs> and you know, they, he makes fun of them and they love it. Yeah. Even his own culture. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's especially his own culture. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. Oh, dear. Fun guy, man. Fun he guy. He is. Well, he we is. love him too. Well, look, yeah. I think we've... Uh, <laughs> 
probably kept you too long, man. But mate, yeah, I don't t- even know how long we're talking for. We're just talking for. I like you I guys, know. like typical Greek podcast. I love me see order the guy. Four hey, days later, eh, fiaxa me supa to eh, the cazzo. Yeah, what do you want for pro? You know, the pro, you know, the fiaxa man. You know. Well, Ange, mate, yeah. we can't wait to see you live this weekend. We're, I'm <laughs> coming fun. on Sunday, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll have we'll have a good time. Wonderful, there. Uh, guys! Thanks for having me yeah. on Uzo Talk, and we we had an Uzo, and did we ever talk? We uh, did. We, we did. I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, no. You know, I love Australia. Yeah, and I'm not saying it because I'm here. I just really feel like just sitting here with you guys for the last couple of hours. We, we have so much in common talking about things. You know, yeah. that, that, I think that's and and we and listen. This, Congrats on you guys and with what you're doing. Uh, we need more of this in the world. People need to know more of what's going on. We're not we're not passing it on enough to the next generation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're going to become like those Italians in New York, ninth generation who don't even know where their families are from. Well, you know? that's so, part of what we're trying it, to do. Man. You got to go to comedy shows. You got to go to Greece. You got to have an Uzo. You got to <laughs> yeah, do all that stuff. That's it. Fantastic. Look, we, thank you for coming out as well. We know you got a show on tonight as well. So. I, got, I got two shows tonight. Two shows so tonight. I don't, I don't even know where they are. The one's at Factory <laughs> and one's at the Comedy Store. Comedy I did, Store. I did the Gallo. I don't even know. They don't tell me nothing. They just finicky. <laughs> yeah. Do the show. Do five minutes. Do it. Well, do just it. quickly, where can people find you online? Plug well, yourself. Go, plug go to funnygreek.com. Mm-hmm. Funny Greek, not geek. Uh, on Instagram or on Twitter, go to Angelo Tsarukas or Funny Greek. It's all listed there. Some people can't spell Tsarukas. And, <laughs> and I'm on like LinkedIn and uh, Instagram, even TikTok. Oh, you're on I'm TikTok as TikTok well. I'm TikTok too there now. Some Wonderful. of the videos you're are everywhere. going crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's my kids on TikTok, so okay. I keep yeah. on TikTok. And, well, and uh, uh, the Ethniki... Uh, um, Ephemerida Tisotavas, which has a circulation of 14 people. <laughs> I'm featured there every week. If you Big okay. shout out to the paper in Canada. Outstanding. Wow. Well, look, we'll, we'll, put the links, we'll put the links to the website in the, in the show notes here. Angelo Tsarujas, thank you very much for being Thanks, with guys. us. Man. Thanks, guys. Thanks a lot, so Nick much, and Ange. Tom. Pleasure. Um, I'm so happy to be part of your gay podcast. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you very much. It doesn't matter, guys. We're Greeks. It's okay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Not that there's anything wrong with, anything wrong with that. <laughs> no, thanks, guys. My pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so Ange. much. It's been awesome. Find us on at Uzo Talk on most social media platforms or Uzo underscore talk on Instagram. If you've got an email to send us or you've got some questions... Uzo Talk at Outlook.com. Nick Athanasiu, thank you very much, mate. Mate, Tom, that was fantastic. You did really well. I don't know how you spat all that out. After the, <laughs> we've had Uzo, we had B, we had everything. Yeah. So. Awesome. Great show. Love it, guys. Thank you, Tom. You're a Take care. See you guys. Ακολουθήστε μας στο Soundees, στο Spotify, στο Apple Podcasts και στο Google Podcasts.